coming at you from the OLR Podcast Studio. Eh, it's really more of a basement. Coming to you from the OLR Basement Studio. But it's still a podcast. Coming to you from the Podcast Basement Studio. Yeah, but you still need to say OLR. Coming to you from the OLR Podcast Basement Studio. Oh, that's way too many words. Coming at you. That's not enough. You still need to say OLR. Let's just start. It's OLR. Welcome to Did the you One Lane blow Road me a kiss Podcast. To Did you blow me a kiss to start the show? This is a special edition of the One Lane Road Podcast because Lucas is on opioids. I'm not on nothing. His eyes are red. They're dilated. He's laughing like a schoolgirl. Got a new haircut. Looks like shit, by the way. <laughs> I'll rub it on you. Your... Where'd you get your haircut at? Same place I always get it cut at. <laughs> I ain't telling you. Where, where the barber gets where the, halfway where, through it and says, fuck it, and drops the scissors? She, just, she says, I'm out. She just said, close enough. <laughs> Going home. Um, I'll leave you a tip on your <laughs> table, man. That's good enough. <laughs> we'll just stop right there. Our friend James is here. James. Hello. Hello. Hi, James. Hello. Talk into the microphone, James. Well, I was a long ways back. I was yeah. relaxing. Yeah, I'll say you, uh, you weren't ready. You weren't ready, James. Didn't know I was getting thrown in. I yeah, you you're coming in from the beginning, James. Be nice. Yeah. No. <laughs> you had not been here in 10 episodes. Where you been? <laughs> I've got kids. Yeah, yeah. And a wife. Yeah, yeah. And work. As do we. Yeah. Where have you been? I don't own a podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We do. Yeah. What's uh? What's on your hat? An anvil? And a I, hammer? It come with a pair of boots. Apparently, it stands for 10 Hall, which is... I did not know it, but apparently a fancy form of rodeo boots. I like the boots. Uh huh. She got the boots for me for a present, I, and the hat come with it. I actually like the hat. Yeah, it's like got a hammer and anvil on yeah, it. I don't yeah. know uh, what that has to do with boots. It's the tin hall symbol. I think. Tin hall. Yep. Tin hall. <laughs> I like them. She made fun of me for them. She's uh-huh. made fun of them since I got them, and everybody else loves them. You got to embrace your your boots. When you get a, a, a nice pair of boots, you got to embrace them. How many times? The Caymans have been made fun of. Uh, one hundred and nine episodes. Right, I, so uh, I love I love the boots, and like I said, she keeps making fun of them everywhere she goes. She tries to call me out on them in front of people, and people are like, "But I like the boots." She also <laughs> then she looks stupid. I like that part. Does she Does she come from a hometown where they say yurt? Yes. Yes. Yes, she does. Yeah, she, she make does. Fun of anything. Y'all keep talking. I'm wanting to show you something. How about you look pull, up? Pull up those ten hall boots yeah. right here and see if we can find them. That's what I would have googled if I was going to yeah. go I was, with Google. I was actually, I was actually just showing you something else. Okay, but well, hey, I'd like to have those. That two hundred eighty-one dollars. We didn't care. Here, I'd love to have those. Sarah, if you're listening, two hundred eighty dollars, two hundred eighty-one dollars boot barn. Is this the? Is this Whoa. the boots that you have? That's the brand. They ain't the ones I got. I've got some brown ones. No, <laughs> no a, those are not the boots. That the boots I have. that you have. I would not own those. Who the hell? That's would? a little much. That they're not boring. <laughs> they're not boring. <laughs> get it? Well, nobody else. I'm not buying. Does. I'm not. People buying on the radio anything. can't get that. The oh, 62 yes. people listening didn't get that reference, <laughs> but it was. Look them up. Not boring. B o a r i n g. Get it? I do because I saw it. Cool. James, do you see yours anywhere on here? This is a stu- This is kind of a no. stupid company. They have a lot of gimmicks going on. <laughs> no, Just click through the they, they've got a lot of craziness stuff. on the bottom of the boots, which is something else she makes fun of. And I'm like, who in the world looks at the bottom of the boot? For the, by the time somebody's looking at the bottom of my boot, I really don't care. That's what like they paying twelve hundred dollars for the Eric Church boots that have lyrics on the bottom that you're going to walk off. Yeah, you know? I've heard of somebody maybe paying like seven for it. I don't want to call anybody out that's shorter than they need to be. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get them. Yeah, seems like this may be a for chicks. Oh, gals. Well, I mean, they also make women's boots, as mm. most boot companies do. Harm. Is that yours, right there? What? Harm. No. How about you, you guy boots? Well, I am. I oh, well, click on them. That's where you click on it. Oh, uh, they're similar to those top right, but that's not them. Beef man? <laughs> Bob wire. Go on down. I like, See, the I like that second pin. one on the right there. I like those. It's got the pin up on it. Yeah. Actually, I, I like those second ones on the right. I'd like to have a pair of those to this, go with some black slacks. No, one? no, no. The second one's on the down. Second row down. Is that a row or a column? I can't remember how that works. Uh, I don't know. I think it's a, I think it's a Columns row. Columns rubbing down, rows to left and right. Yeah, so the second row on the right. right the here? black plaid, yeah, I like those. I'd play checkers on those. I, I like them. I mean, I think they, 
I don't want to so wear. So what boots do you have? Uh, go on down. I'll I tell like you these beef them. mans. Scroll a little bit. I'll tell you when I see them. They're probably on there. You have the hanky panky. Is that thing. it? That's literally all they have on here. Well, then they don't have them on there. Do you have anything to you? The Derricks ain't bad. It's similar to those black ones, only they're in a brown, like different shades of brown. I like the high rollers and the hanky pankies. Yeah, that's a little what much. Those I like those actually. <laughs> mine are mine are not far off from that. That's what I said. Hanky pankies. Mm-hmm. Mine are not far it's off a, from that. This is a tiger in a space. But who cares suit. what's on the bottom of a boot? It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's I do kind of like the uh Logo. I like the, the hammer and anvil. Yeah. I'm not. I like the old Derek ones there, too. Top in they my. They might boot me too bad. Top in my boots. Okay. Boots for pussies. Bro. Oh. <laughs> Faggot boots. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's cool. <laughs> Lick my boots. Faggot porn gay videos. All right. Uh, well, that's cool. Leathers boots and submission. They're well, Lou Casey Caymans. Oh, okay. I'm oh, sorry. I was. Luke Casey, how you spell it? C A I M A N. Um, yeah. Cayman boots. Mm-hmm. James, we can hear your conversation on the radio. He's a school board member, you know. Hmm. Luke Casey Cayman's right here. <coughs> boots are them. Mm. Those are nice boots. I don't see them yet. Let's keep looking. This is the name right there, I think. Nope. Just, just saying, there, there's boots it's, to wear to the farm, and there's boots to, to wear in place of dress shoes, mm-hmm. and I'd rather wear boots and dress shoes. Yeah, me too. Um, now. I wear mine every time I go somewhere fancy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're fancy. Church, funerals, and concerts, basically. Every time. They have these uh, El Dorado boots. They're handmade at Boot Barn. They are comfortable. I tell you what, the mo- one of the for the price, especially one of the most comfortable boot you'll ever wear is a Durango. Yeah, yeah, oh Durango boots are really They're comfortable. So comfortable. <laughs> I believe these El Dorados are actually like a Durango brand. Hmm. I didn't know that. Justin yeah. boots will give you diabetic feet. Yeah, yeah. Those are all handmade. Oof. They're comfortable. These whole the whole sides. Those those are the type of boots. Looks that like one person made them for a week's paycheck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They yeah. Uh, they are expensive, but they are comfortable. I went to look for a pair of Lucases. They did not have them, but they had these. And the guy sold me on them, but I haven't bought a pair. Yeah, I think Lucases is probably a little overpriced. Yeah, he also told me that since uh, they started singing about Lucases and all these songs and everything now that... They've jacked up. They've, uh, they actually, they couldn't keep up with demand, so they started making, they're not handmade as much as they used to be. Yeah. You can still get Lucases handmades, but... But not you, all of them you, you are handmade now. You can't beat a good boot. Like I told her, I said, oh, if you yeah. can't figure out what to get me for a present when you boots. have to give presents, I don't really care if you get one or not. But if you're going to do it, just get a pair of boots. Like I'll put them to use and they nice don't pair. go bad. Where do y'all stand on 30 year old man wearing snake skin? Their neck. Well, it depends on what they do for a living. Did you get it? Did you get it? No. Let's say it again. Where do you stand on 30 year old man in snake skin? Your neck. Yeah, you get it. Now nah, you got it. Do you get it, James? <laughs> I get it. I'm just not laughing. <laughs> um, <laughs> seen a 45 year old man wearing snake skins that was a uh, surveyor. I thought that was fairly appropriate. You don't? Would you wear snake skin boots? No. <laughs> I don't know. What about for nostalgia purposes? No. I had them when I was a kid. I bet you had a pair of those. Pretty much. Six hundred and forty dollars. I think I had a pair of those as a kid. Man, Mine were probably forty five. They were not. That's awesome, a little too sure. high for snake skin boots. Those better be made out of real snake. I'd imagine. Western rattlesnake, even. Man. <laughs> so <On> what? <laughs> neck. Dip shit. <laughs> Awkward silence. Well, I don't just wait for you to get your little giggles out. Uh, they're out. They're done. Uh, they may continue on. As you the know how goes. I knew you were going to be in rare forms? Because your gif game was strong it was morning. it was Jeff. pretty good wasn't it jeff yeah do you know everybody's called it, it gif it was quick this morning. but the man who's come up with the gif jeff hmm. he said he come out and said it was jeff jeff hmm. why don't you say the letters well i seen old people some old people say you know you know those gifs you put on facebook not wrong i don't think anybody's wrong i'm, I'm old people then you say gifs yeah, yeah. it's a lot it's extra consonants 
There's a vowel in there, you dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been doing, James? What have you been building? Tell us. Shit, I don't even know offhand. Um, I've been working on some apartments in Baxter, doing some siding, but that's a train wreck from start to finish. Yeah, you know? yeah. We've done some, we've been doing a lot of siding work. We've done some siding for a lady up at Moss recently. I don't know. We've been building shit, Lucas. I don't, I don't. <laughs> Hell of a salesman. There, there's, we're, we do we're, siding. We're booked through like. We do some more siding. We're booked through like September. I, I don't. Really? We're, we're loaded with That's work. That's pretty good. I mean, it's good. And I, I like having all the work. It's, it's a little stressful, but. Yeah. Our lumber's nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we don't provide the lumber, Dustin. Yeah. Let's let's make some of Dustin's cup. He brought in. Well, it's from James's house. A forty-four ounce big gulp. It's uh, from James's house, so who can really make? If fun I told of you it? what was in it, you'd really make fun of him. Kool Aid is there? Kool Aid? There's Kool Aid in it. No, no, it's Gatorade. <clears throat> there is Gatorade in it. It's a thirst quencher. Say it one more time. It's a thirst quencher. It's quencher. summer. Quencher. Quencher. Squencher. Did you say squencher the first time? Thirst quencher. Squencher. Are y'all, y'all going to actually cover some content here? Yeah. We're just going to yeah. sit here and babble. This is horse shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just horse shitting around right now. You know, we had uh, on our Instagram this week and on our Facebook, yeah. Lucas, one of our most loyal, dedicated, would shut the hell up every loyal, morning, dedicated man. listeners. It, um, it's one of our best posts. Yeah. Of, did you see it, James, on Facebook? Oh, I did see it. Yeah. What yeah. is it? Thanks for the like, Dick. Sorry. I, what is it? Let me see it. Most, Why do you even know who likes those things? Like, how do how, I don't know. I don't know, I promise. <laughs> you just you just did prove that you did not like it. I don't it, know but, if I did or didn't like oh. it. Let's, which is more the reason I wonder why he did or did not know that. <laughs> I don't know if I did or not. I probably did. I like about 90,000 things a Most day. Most ridiculous, there. especially girls. Most ridiculous moment from 2002. DK's gangsta necklace or Lucas making love to the camera in his oversized Eddie George jersey. Hashtag embarrassing. Make fun of ourselves for anyone can. Uh-huh. Hashtag, hashtag 100 pounds ago. Yeah. I think you were just showing off that you used to be skinny so people would remember. Nah. Let me now, see. We had, so what, what happened was when Lucas was making fun of me last week, we made fun of this necklace. So when I was looking for a picture of something else in the old yearbook for our throwback, I found that pic. We were side by side in the yearbook, and I thought, well, shit, that's too easy not to. Thadric says, I can smell the Abercrombie Fierce coming out of this photo, and I, he's probably right. He's wrong. It, 2002, I was wearing Tommy Hilfiger. You were probably wearing that Giorgio stuff. You had yeah, Giorgio. Aqua de Joe. Why do you Giorgio know about his yeah. cologne? Because I used to bum it. I yeah. used to stay at Lucas's house. Yeah. I used to bum it. Yep. I knew two people in this world that wore Aqua de Gio, Lucas and Peanut. <laughs> two peas in a pod. <laughs> Aqua de Joe by Giorgio Armani. That's it. And I had Tommy Hilfiger at the time. Like, Allie Beth Freeler says, will you please sign my yearbook? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, we made the girls swoon. We did, Allie Beth. We did. No, hey, there, <laughs> there is a show idea for you right there. Bring in your yearbook and read some of the things that were signed in it. I you know. want some nostalgia yeah. right there. It is. Jeez. They didn't. Nobody ever signed my yearbook. Nobody really? Liked me. <laughs> Nobody liked me. I don't uh, believe that. Meathead said DK looks like he just got done starring in a dim franchise boys. <laughs> so they stole my look. Dim franchise boys. Uh, but for real, y'all probably y'all could have probably survived high school up here in the three seventeen dress like that. LOL. Where is Meathead seven twenty six from? I think Indianapolis. Oh, okay. So Allie went back and forth with us for a little while. There was, I said, I'm sure we more than likely did, right? She goes. It was great having class together. I hope you have a great summer. Sure, it went something like that. <laughs> I told her she took out a whole That's page. Of, I, she's right, 100%. Yeah. Took out a whole page of my senior yearbook. And uh, she said, What can I say? Y'all both made the girl swoon. Indiana, yeah. That's, she's not wrong. Yeah. She's not wrong. Well, she ain't wrong. Girl swooned. Now, uh, Fanny, Fanny Droppers, Hickman, and. Yeah, right. <laughs> right here. <laughs> I Who's think, got two thumbs and a panty dropper right here, buddy? I think she had a. I hope you got it out of your system when you were a kid. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. It's all gone now. Um, um, I think speaking she's been of, sarcastic. Spe- yeah, I, I would imagine. Speaking of yearbooks, you sent me an interesting picture of your yearbook. Uh, some of my pictures. Hated Lucas's guts. Hey, you hated my guts, James. Come on. Uh, Dustin sent me a picture from his yearbook of me, and uh, we had a strong 
GIF game going on this morning. Hey, uh, he colored me up in his yearbook, James. <laughs> I look like Wyatt Earp. I don't know why he drew me so cool. He drew me in my a big mustache. Gave me a. Don't feel bad. Gave me a. Best. Pit- pistol holster there on my right hand side is that you or curtis best me best man in my wedding don't exist in the (laughs) is that elliot Elliot brown don't even don't even exist elliot brown don't even exist in the yearbook (laughs) i marked him out and he really pissed me off yeah Yeah. dustin was a prick as a kid i don't know if y'all remember yeah Yeah. Uh, i like how you here's my here's the other here's the other one so i had a check mark (laughs) <laughs> Dustin went through and checkmarked his, <laughs> his friends in his book and uh, X'd out the ones that weren't his friends. I got a check mark and then pissed him off later and got X'd out. <laughs> oh, Looks like Tini McCarter down below me. She uh, she had an X from the beginning. <laughs> Daniel Collins looks like he was on, on the up and down, too. Yeah, he, he got swapped around there, too. <laughs> Where's that picture? At? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah da- I was undecided on Daniel. He's undecided on Daniel, but Daniel come out on top like he normally does. <laughs> he's he's uh he he comes back. Tenny, me and Tenny wind up on the same list by the time the whole thing was over with. I also found a, a list of class favorites. Yeah, we we got class favorites a little bit. Yeah, nobody wanted to stand next to you. They had to take separate poses. <laughs> Cindy Fox was let me, out. Let me see the. Let me see the. Let me see the. Man, missile tit strong back nineteen ninety two. Scroll back a couple, see my uh, my my strong converses. Mm. Oh, them are big. <laughs> those are huge. Look how those b- are the biggest shoes I've ever seen in my life. The I've never seen tongue on those things. Or it says cons. They've got the letters so big they couldn't put the verse at the end of it. It just says cons across the tongue of it. Gene Simmons is jealous of that tongue. Yeah. Keely Cherry and them all white sneaks too. I mean, them are bright white, looking like Pocahontas. Bam! Look at the look at the size of the sneakers he's got on there. Couldn't even put my blue jeans over the top of them. They they were the tongue so big it didn't even lace up past the tongue. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. yeah, I love her. Yeah, there, right. there's not a more beautiful person on the face of this earth than Jesse James Decker. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I love her. Most women look good in that pose, though. Let's be honest. She wouldn't been over there. <laughs> I hated you, Lucas. You, you did. Up, up. I know. I was sitting there thinking. I was trying to remember what it was. Do you know. remember what it was? Maybe it was those thigh high white socks you were wearing. Dork. I still. <laughs> <laughs> you like me now? <laughs> Supposedly. Even though I had. Hey, my slip on game was strong even then. Let me see. Mm. Those are some girly ass shoes. Man, how did on. you get Crocs and oh, were you? They, those had like, nine. Those had like specks on them. How'd you get Crocs? Speck, speckled Crocs. They weren't Crocs. I couldn't breathe in them. Mm. What did you do? Just uh, what me and Sydney Fox was hand in hand from the beginning. Man, you just don't. You just don't see kids come dressed to school just sharp <laughs> like that anymore. You just don't see these sharp dressed kids like this anymore. You must know his picture name, Beverly. Put with the buck, with the Mama said up. you're going you're going to school in <laughs> blue jeans and a button up today, honey. Mm. Who's you going to read us here? I don't remember. I, I, Indiana's on our screen for some reason. Oh, I just looked up where the three one seven area code was at, and you were right. It's in Indianapolis. Hmm. Well. All right. Yeah. It's always, but you're not want to comment on this ridiculous picture. Who had it? Who had it worse? What do you think, James? Uh, yeah. Did you see the face he was making though? That's the thing. I'm some... just really surprised both of y'all didn't end up as rappers after seeing that. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know how you did. It I don't know bad. if you've been listening to the show. Yeah, that's how I, I know you did. But I kind of am. That's how I know y'all weren't successful. <laughs> I kind of am a rapper. I mean, the spoken word is kind of um, my stick, you know. Yeah. Can I can you give him a, a form yeah, of it? Right hold now? on. Let, y'all just keep looking at pictures. Let me find a little. Uh, maybe Big Pimpin' by Jay Z. Yeah. <laughs> That's so weird. That was the one I had in my head. This is what this show has come to, James. Uh, That's what I was worried uh, about. Uh. 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 It's Big Pimpin', baby. It's Big Pimpin' spending G's. Feel me. Uh-huh, uh, uh-huh, uh-huh, jia, 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 you know, I've, I thug them, 
F them, love them, leave them, because I don't effing need them. Take them out the hood, keep them looking good, but I don't effing feed them. First time they fuss, I'm breezing, talking about what's the reasons. So what I think he's saying is, is he's leaving. He ain't. You lived up to the picture. He ain't. He ain't. He ain't. Uh, he's effing them, but he ain't messing with them. He ain't staying. He ain't staying. He's he's leaving. He's actually a pimp in every sense of the word. Bitch. <laughs> Better trust than believe him in the cut where I keep him. Till I need a nut. Till I need to beat them guts. See, what I think he's talking about is pistachios. Just, just a guess there. Because they bust my guts up. That's what I'm thinking. Then it's... Maybe Mexican food. Yeah, then it's beep, beep. And I'm picking them up. See, now this next line makes me think what he was saying before wasn't about pistachios. <laughs> Let them play with the D in the truck. See, that makes me think that, was, that wasn't what that previous line meant. I don't know. By D, you mean penis. Yes, yes. Okay, just clarify. Many chicks want to put Jig of Fist in cuffs, divorce him, and split his bucks. Just because you got good head, I'm going to break bread. So you can be living it up. What does he mean by good head? I mean shape. I'm guessing face, facial features. You know, symmetrical. James, any opinion on what good head means in a rap song? Mm. No, never heard of it. I don't listen to rap. Or, pa- or of course, you're married. You probably never heard of it. Because parts of that. with nothing. Ding, ding, ding. Y'all be <laughs> fronting. Me give my heart to a woman, not for nothing. Never happen. I'll be forever macking. Not Jeremy. Heart cold as assassins. I got no passion. I got no patience. And I hate waiting. Oh, get your ass in. And let's ride. Check them out now. Ride, yeah. Let's ride. Check them out now. Ride, yeah. Mm-hmm. Rapper, James. Rapper. Imagine if he'd had a silver chain on in a picture. Uh, I can go over and put my big chain on if you want me to. <laughs> it's still on the wall. <laughs> still on the wall. But I blame Jeremy Hammer for my part because I was just a normal white kid until I met Jeremy and Casey. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say Casey Hagen had some big part in that. But I was always the, the rational one of the three of the saying, guys, we're white. Uh, we're white. They're throwing uh, up gang signs and, and pictures. And uh, I'm like, well, we're white. But uh, then after they left, I got worse. Hey, what's the door handles like in Jeremy's house? Ugh. <laughs> that was brutal. <laughs> And it, and it was soft. Yeah. The door handle was soft. <laughs> it, was, it was real soft, wasn't it? And that was still. It, it just kept twisting and it wouldn't, the door, <laughs> door wouldn't open, would it? Somebody on the other side said, like, there's in distress and I can't get in this door. It's real glorious. Do I pull it? Do I pull it or push it? Like Garnet Cherry, pull it. How do I get in? <laughs> the door knob was glorious. <laughs> We so serious this morning, James. We're talking Why are about you so serious, James. <laughs> <laughs> We're just talking about doorknobs. Just you... right up your alley. <laughs> not in my alley. Look at look at Lucas's face in that. I mean, look at that. He's just so serious. Like he, not... I was. Luke, Lucas really thought he was hot shit right there. He thought like all the girls want me. Yeah. Beep beep, and I'm picking them up. Little play with the penis in the truck. So. <laughs> Probably shouldn't say that. How embarrassing is that, really? I mean, it's what people done back then. I would say it was the nineties. It was a different time. No, what what yeah. what what Lucas did was what people in the nineties did. Nobody was doing this silly shit that I was doing. Nobody's wearing a stupid cross. Yeah, man. Yeah, they were. A lot of people had it tattooed around their <laughs> <laughs> wrapped well, around their hands. That's good. I never got that rosary beads. But my point of it is, is all these people that get so silly about. Oh, I wish they'd quit mentioning me. I right, will mention us. Listen. This is what we'll do then. We'll make fun of ourselves. It's a lot easier. <laughs> a lot more content. Yeah. That way. Yeah. You, you wanna... Hey, you know, whenever I was like six year old, I, I you remember Transformers? You remember how Transformers used to be a big thing? When we were little? Yeah. I, you know, shut the hell up. No. You know, Transformers were a big thing when we was little, and I used to play, I had these this box of Transformers, and I like to keep stuff in little boxes, right? So I had a, one of those pencil boxes, little plastic pencil boxes. I put my Transformers in it, and I brought it to school, and a girl... 
<laughs> a, a girl wound up taking one of my transformers and claimed she didn't. I've never seen it again. And I seen her earlier this week. And the first thing, this is 30 years later, the first thing that popped in my head was, I bet she still got my transformer. <laughs> James, James ain't about it today. I'll tell you a story similar to that one time. One time a guy uh, pushed me off the uh, monkey bars at Head Start yeah. and laughed at me. I was, yeah. I was laying on the ground crying. Mm-hmm. It wasn't me, was it? No, it wasn't you. Good, because I don't remember it. And uh, I grew up in adult life, and I took his girlfriend. <laughs> because he pushed you? Yeah. They said, why'd you do that? I said, because he pushed me off the monkey bars. <laughs> when we were four. I never forgot it. <laughs> and I enjoyed it. Good. I enjoyed the payback. Good. <laughs> Good. For what it's worth. For what it's worth. Well, James is about to piss me off. Okay? Yeah. I'm, I'm tired. You're bringing I'm the sleepy. whole energy down, James. What's going on? Why are you so sleepy? <laughs> tired. Don't get enough sleep. Went to Curtis Hatcher's wedding. Congratulations, Curtis. I don't know if he listens to the show, but mm-hmm. congratulations. I told him he either made does. the best decision or worst decision of his life. He'll know in about three or four months. She probably. Yeah, well, they. they yeah. I guess they is the problem. <laughs> yeah. there. That's how marriage yeah, works. Yeah, she's so. probably going to know prior to him knowing. Yeah. What type of decision she's made with her life. I think after you're married, look, you look at weddings a lot different than you do before you're married. How so? Well, after you're married, you look at them all cynical like. Before you're married, you look <laughs> at them with rose colored glasses. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> is that accurate? Hmm. No, I don't think so. Really? No. So you don't go to a wedding now and think he don't know what the f- he's getting himself into? No, no. Really? I no, I don't. When I, I, when I go to a wedding now, I go, man, they are young. They are way too young for this. But so that's basically the same thing I just said. No, in a nicer form. No, no, it's a nicer form. Yeah, I say they're just real young. Yeah, naive. Is yeah, what you're naive. Yeah. yeah, same thing yeah. I just said. He don't know what he's getting himself into. I don't think it's just him, though. I think it's well, them. they they don't them. know. That. Yeah, yeah. I, it is a two way street. Yes, yeah, so I just don't think it's him generally. Oh yeah, they have no idea what they're about to walk face yeah. first into. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. It's worth it. It's fun. You just don't know what you're doing. No, you have no idea. And and beforehand, it's all it's all rainbows and butterflies. It's yeah. all wonderful. You just think life is going to be glorious, and well, it's not. It is sometimes. It is sometimes. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, it is sometimes. It's fun until you're taking the long way home when you're at work and you're you're wore out and you all you want to do is leave work and you take the two hour detour around Haydenburg so you ain't got to go home. Look at your <laughs> wife and your kids. You're screaming dogs. <laughs> Kidding. There's there's just a lot more to it than. Oh I, yeah. I, I look at it now like they don't. They don't realize what they're getting yourself into, and before you, well, if you don't know what you're getting yourself into, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of uh, getting married and getting into things, uh, I had a gender reveal last night for my new nephew <coughs> coming in. My little sisters. Hey, what's that guy married to her called? Quentin. The brother-in-law. Brother-in-law. <laughs> yeah, that's what they call that, him. That, yeah. that term. That yeah. term. Yeah. Yeah. You said brother-in-law, and I, I, I went to Kara's brother. <laughs> He's he's not. I, I don't think he is. <laughs> That's my brother in law. But so is Quentin. I forgot. I forgot what those words meant. Quentin probably listens to the show quicker yep. than uh Brandon would. Uh Brandon probably uh Brandon probably doesn't know what a podcast is. Yeah. I can see that. There's something else. Having kids, like people they have no idea what they're about to walk face first into. Holy shit, there's no way. Have you I told my sister the other day, I said Wait, just wait until you find shit in your ch- child's hair, and you have no idea how it happened. He was sitting in a chair. Wait, do you find him eating something, and you didn't give him any food, and you hadn't yeah. necessarily given me anything like that in three days? And they swore, yeah, you just, I don't feed my kids in three or four days sometimes, you know, but you walk. They just forage throughout the house, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're chewing it up, and as you're trying to get to them real fast, they start chewing faster and swallow it, and so running. that you have no idea what could have happened, but... When they're just sitting in their car seat and, and you get them out and there's shit up in their hair, it's up their back. I, I think How the people who don't have them yet don't realize is that it is a, and you can't state this well enough, early on is a 24 hour a day job. It's like being they at never, work 24 hours a day. It's like they never sleep, but they're always asleep. Well, and, and you can't, 
you can't change your attention span to something else. Yeah. You no. cannot do it. No, and you don't have to. They do it on their own. No, like but I mean, you seconds. can't change your attention span to something else because, you know, when they're in that dangerous age where they could get hurt on anything, you have to be watching them constantly. And it is. Oh, like, especially whenever they first start walking. It's stressful. Whenever they first start walking, you think. Man, it wasn't too bad whenever he just he was just laying there and you wouldn't yeah, sleep. Yeah, did you then. turn your eyes away and you knew nothing bad was going to happen unless something fell on him? Yeah, I was like, if you if you just padded the whole room, everything was going to be fine. You know, if nothing's going to fall, everything's good. But as soon as they start walking, everything's dangerous. I had to cut a watermelon at four thirty, five thirty in the morning three Saturdays ago. <laughs> Bailey's needed watermelon. Lindsay was no, at but work. That's it. That, that's how it works. And you know how he described it to me. And I apologize if I mentioned this on the show before. I hadn't heard. If I this. told the story. He, he gets me up, and she goes to work early on Saturday morning, so he comes in. As soon as she knows he's not there and he loses his mind, then he's going, da, 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 ah, and he says it like four times. like, dude, what, Spider-Man? Do you want chocolate milk in your sippy cup? What are you saying? Warm? Um, that's another thing. Hold on, we'll break. And he says, but then he says, he keeps going, no, 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 da, 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 <laughs> and I said, I mean, it was like Asian shit. And I finally was like, dude, just, Sasha would have got that. <laughs> I said, just walk me in the kitchen and show me what you want. And he goes to the refrigerator and pulls open the refrigerator, and there's the watermelon. Mm-hmm. And I said, you want watermelon at five thirty? So I'm going in there with this big old butcher knife, just cutting into thousand pieces. <laughs> yeah. Takes one back, goes Mm-mm, nasty. Oh, okay. He said, chocolate milk, my sippy cup. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Let's go. Let's Eat go. Your watermelon. Yeah. Maybe let's go in the living room and try to eat some of this watermelon. I've just cut up for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah. And he just, uh, and you know, now he has to confirm. We went through this on the show, James. Not only does he drink chocolate milk all the time, it's got to be warm. He wants warm milk. Oh, God. I, I, I'm glad we didn't stick with that route. Yeah. Jim, Jimmy's kid does the same thing. Warm milk. We'll only drink warm milk. Oof. Yeah. We'll see? not drink it cool. It has to be microwave nuked for just a second. No, uh, it's not. Mm. It's 55 seconds. It's like oh, steam it's coming hot. off that bitch, yeah. So I hand yeah, it back we, to we him. Yeah, we don't have to do that, but he he'll, drinks a lot of milk. He'll go, chocolate milk? Yes, Bayless. It's chocolate milk. Warm? <laughs> yeah, Just drink it. T- t- turn it up, turn it up, drink it. Yeah. See what it is. I said, no. Uh-uh, that's not what it is. No, you don't want to do that. Because I'll say, white milk, cold. <laughs> oh, chocolate milk, warm as a big cup. Warm. <laughs> yep. that's a, uh, and, that, and that's parenting at its best. Right Sometimes yeah. they that's just it. lose their mind. You don't even know why. Yesterday he got yep. up. He, you know what pisses me off when I get FaceTimed at 8 a.m. Monday through Friday when they're just waking up on Saturday when she goes to work? He's up at 4.30, 4.45, 5 o'clock. He was screaming so loud yesterday. I was like, do you want me to go to the living room? No. Do you want to go to the living room? No. Do we stay in the bedroom? No. Do you want me to turn on Spider-Man? No, everything was just like ballistic. So you were laying in the hall watching him play with toys? Crying. Like I, dude, I was in the <laughs> fetal, fetal position just ready to cry, and I finally just laughed at him. I looked him in the face and I went, no. You're not doing this shit to me today. <laughs> and I said, so I laid down and I covered myself up and I turned it on uh, YouTube and watched whatever I watched, you know, browsers. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you tell you don't listen, James, because we had a big episode about browsers two weeks no, ago. I, There's a kid. Me. I don't have time to wipe my own ass. How dude, am I going to have time to listen? All you got to do is when you're, I mean, I you, download, I give you your little clips you should, online. You should, would you rather listen uh, to Tracy 45 minutes down the road or listen to us? I don't listen to either one. Tracy <laughs> sleeps. <laughs> we, uh, I, there's a guy in Red Bull and walking around, driving around with a Brazzers license plate holder on the back of his vehicle. That's just like, I'm a, I'm a chronic masturbator. I, I'm not arguing. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how to get up? You didn't. Those? You didn't say that word anywhere, and any guy anywhere be like, "What the hell was that?" Yeah, what was that? <laughs> yeah, that I don't know. I no. I, I told guarantee him. if he does, his wife's right over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if he says that, it's because she's nearby. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't know what he means. That's funny, but it's rough. I, I mean, that's just that's the thing I struggle with on the daily is is just the constant attention of it. What? Does it's it? a lot, man. We was. We were coming in the house the other night, and he said, I don't want to go in the house. I said, <laughs> That's okay. a daily battle. I said, okay. All right. I'm going in the house because it's 9 o'clock at night. I said, all right. I'm going in the house. No. I said, yeah. We're, it's time to go in the house. I said, I'm going I'm going in the house. You can stay out here and play if you want to. And I start walking up the steps. He come running over. I said, okay. You ready to go in? He said, no. I said, all right. I'm going in. I love you. Have fun. Knock on the door when you're ready. And so I walked all the way up the steps, got on the porch, and he starts climbing the steps real fast. I said, 
Oh, so we're going in now? He's yeah, I want to play with my toys. Says, okay, let's go in and play with these toys. <laughs> don't I wish I had what Luke whatever that is. I either I don't possess it or Bayless don't possess it. <laughs> one of the two. I don't I don't because I try to be the patient one. Lindsay doesn't have patience. So I try to be the patient one. And it doesn't work. Now when we got that little half breed pup of ours, we got a half Pomeranian, half shit suit. I read up on him and it's like not suggested with kids. Oh <laughs> yeah. Small <laughs> kids because they're so small and because kids are rough owls. And I told Lindsay I screenshot it and I was like Thoughts, yeah. <laughs> you know, we we own one of these yeah. wild ass kids. So this morning I hear and the little shit's trying to bite. Was Bayless. that Bayless or the dog? <laughs> <laughs> the dog after Bayless had him in a headlock, carrying him through the house on his shoulder, yeah, like this, just barely dangling. So I hope he bites the hell out of you. <laughs> you need a big dog, is what you need. A big you got two big ones. I don't yeah. want them let him in the house. Yeah, no, yeah. No. No. Uh, uh, Camden was chasing Molly around, going, "Come here, cow! Come here, cow!" <laughs> <laughs> Prodding her around the house. Chasing around the house. Molly just stops and looks at me every now and again like, are you going to, can you do something about this kid? No, no, no. It's your problem your, now. Your turn. I feel like parents do the same thing to each other, though. Like, kid will run through doing something. If you can get close enough to the parent, you're like, hey, it's yours and run off. <laughs> your turn. I feel like everybody does that. I hope so. If not, it's just my house. <laughs> if he poops, the first one that calls not it, the other one has to change him. No, we don't do that. Which I feel is fair. If you're close enough to notice, that means you're already doing your job. It's the other ones. I'll, I'll be setting Lindsay up all the time. I'll be like, I'll sm- oh, oh, mm-mm. Go no. see your mama. <laughs> I say, buddy, go tell mama you want something to eat. <laughs> and then she'll smell it. And then she'll be like, oh, you've pooped. Here, come on, let's change you. <laughs> I set her up all the time. I played dead one night when he was... <laughs> when he was... Uh, <laughs> he was dying for a sippy in the middle of the night. And I yeah. just, no, I wouldn't. Lindsay's got a good trick. She's like, when the alarm goes off, I'll get you one. Go back to sleep. When my alarm goes off. He falls for that. <laughs> not, not with me, but I, yeah, I play. I rolled over, held my breath. <laughs> just like Chris Brady used to do in seventh grade. That's be held my breath. <laughs> you can't hear me breathing. I'm dead. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. lot. I'm afraid for real when this third one comes around. Like I'm gonna be on nerve meds. Mm-hmm. Right. The old ladies try to get me to. <laughs> to to seek help for anxiety from all of it, and I'm like, no. Damn, I was I'm like, I'll survive it, but I don't want another one. Yeah. I'm not. It, it, it's about to drive me nuts. <laughs> They're rough. It's just so time consuming, y'all, and you. Neither one of y'all know yet. I'm I, not gonna know. I don't want another one. Like she keeps bringing nah, it up. No, I'm talking I, about. I'm talking about you. Talking about when you get on the ve- uh, in the vehicle, you talked about how Bentley is so like baseball right now. Wait till. You're like, work all day long, then you got basketball from 3 to 5, then baseball or football runs over from 5.30 to 7.30. You're getting home at 8.30, and you're eating goddamn Dairy Queen mm. four nights a week because that's the only thing you got. But I can handle that a lot better. I think I can handle that a lot better than the constant attention that Maverick takes. You're going to play sports because I ain't got a full week three hours of the day. No, no, I mean, I've still got to be there for the practices and all that stuff, but I can... Oh, I guarantee it. It doesn't require that constant dangerous attention where you're worried about them dying. (laughs) Uh, You know, you can can get them to all their stuff, and I I feel like I'll be able to handle that a lot better. I was washing my rhino the other day, or doing something. Waylon Bailey said, I went on the back of the, uh, the truck. He's got his Spider-Man gear on always because that's normal. Mm-hmm. He'll be walking around yeah. the house. Next thing I know, he's on the top of my truck shooting yeah. webs down at me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, he'd climb from the bed to the tel- to the toolbox to the top of the truck. I said, "What are you doing, Daddy? Let me jump." <laughs> really? Now, how old is Maverick now? He's two, two, and, two and a half. Two, just barely over two. Okay. When we go to the ballpark, he goes up the chain link fence. I have to stop him as high as I can reach because I'm afraid he'll get too high and I'll have to climb after him. <laughs> it's a crazy, challenge, man. I'm telling you. He- There's, but you know, ain't nothing like it in the world that they can. you can be ready to take them to Happy Haven, to that little Christian school up in the, on the grade, mm-hmm. or on, off the grade. You, you ready to just cry, give them up, put them up for adoption. Then they do that one thing, just light you, just melt your heart. Oh yeah, yeah. You get woke up. You get woke up with a good morning, daddy, and yeah. a little kiss on the cheek, I love and it's you, the daddy. sweetest thing ever. You ever notice though that you know, when you do when you're doing some stupid shit, man, you act just like your mama. 
Is that, that come must come from your mama's side of the family. <laughs> I, I wish oh, I could find say that, that comedian. Uh, no. uh, You're too scared to say it. There's a clip from a comedian I watched before we had the kid, and it just happened to hit at the time before we had it. And he was talking about don't shake the baby. It said, it said I know Which y'all think this is it? stupid. I wish I knew. Was I can't it Burke remember. Crusher? They should have told one of our classmates that. You can probably Google it and find out, though. Don't shake the baby comedian. Uh, I'd imagine it's a, not that common of a skit. <laughs> But uh, in it, he he saw me. He said, "I know y'all think this is a joke, but and you know who would ever do this?" He said, "But it really, in parenting, it gets to that point where oh, Nate Bargatze, but where you just you think this is insane. Anybody would do that, but then it gets to that point. You're like, just a little shake, just a little shake. <laughs> and at some point in parenthood, I feel like we all get to that point where we're like, oh, if I could just shake you a little bit, <laughs> this would all be better. Did Damon Wayans have something like that? If y'all if y'all take a break here and get to watch this, you can uh Nate Bargatze's pretty funny. Damon Wayne said something like that on old stand up for like ninety six, ninety seven. He said sometimes his son just acts real stupid and whiny. See sometimes Pause this and play it, Cliff. You've got to hear this. Hold on. He said I just want to go up to him sometimes and say it's it's talking about his kid where he whines all the time. <coughs> sometimes I just want to go up to him shake him and say Look, faggot, stop. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only in 97 could you get away with calling your straight st- uh, son a faggot mm-hmm. and shaking him. Nate Bargatze's, uh, he's from Nashville. He's pretty funny. He's a comedian. Uh, I yeah. figured that much. Yeah. <laughs> Good call. At the yeah. time, I thought it was stupid. I was like, I can't relate to that. Who would ever sh- actually shake a baby? And at some point, I feel I feel like you all get there. Like when they're just crying to the point where you ain't slept in three days. And I have to keep the knives hidden in my house for myself, <laughs> so you don't slit your. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that. I mean, <laughs> Lindsay had the knife. It's just tiring. Do you remember any of the questions we asked the first week that was really bad? Do you remember them? No, I don't. None of them. I don't remember any of them. I can find them real quick though. Here's the second list of questions. Like, we didn't ask all these. I don't want to answer anything so, inappropriate. Um, it's going to be. Yeah, they're kind of inappropriate. We, asked, we, we answered them. So. Here's one, James. Would you rather be blind or dickless? <laughs> Coming in hot. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, I like that look. Hey, you see that porn star answered them, Lisa Ann? Mm-mm. I don't know how I knew she was. <laughs> Probably blonde. I'd imagine blind guys still get laid. Yeah. yeah. Dickless guys as long as they don't get married. <laughs> you don't think dickless guys have sex? <clears throat> I wouldn't imagine too many of them exist. <laughs> dickless guys or yeah. dickless guys that have sex? Both. Okay. Let's see. That's pretty funny. Would you rather have sex with your cousin or win the Powerball? <laughs> or would you have sex with your cousin to win the Powerball? Well, it's Clay County. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know. Oh, God. That's a lot of money. <laughs> How much? I mean, it depends what the Powerball is. Yeah. Powerball is usually a lot, though. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about $400 million. That's, at pretty, this, that's pretty gross, but at that's this point, a lot of money. At this point, I don't even see my cousins that like how often. Like, how distant of a cousin are we talking? Like, third, it fourth, didn't fifth? Say. It didn't say. Like, third, if we're talking, like, fourth and out, uh, yeah. yeah no I'm doubt. thinking, what about first? Uh, that's uh, that's a lot, I don't man. Know about that. That's too much. But $468 is a lot, too. <sighs> I'm gonna make is you protection a available, I hope? Protection? Oh, you, those make, are called condoms, Dustin. Oh, I'm gonna make a shirt that, no. for James that says "Cousins Fourth and Out," and you're in <laughs> <laughs> for for four four hundred million dollars. Four hundred million, yeah. Um, if you were to be murdered, who would be the most likely suspect? My wife, I would assume. I would imagine so. That's right. Or maybe one of the, one of those kids. <sighs> Wait, what was that last one? Oh, right, here you go. Armed with a ba- this should have been a Mackey question. Armed with a baseball bat, how many ten year olds could you take down <laughs> in a fight? <laughs> Probably a whole school full. I, I would, I would imagine. <laughs> how many is a school full though? I, mean, I don't know. Depends on size. You would school think thirty five, sixty. I think I could take out sixty easily before they got you. Before who got me? The ten year olds or security guard? The ten year olds. Oh, they'd oh. never get me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Ten's pretty big. I, how, how old's Waylon? Twelve. Okay. A little smaller than him. A seal. They're pretty big. They might. Nah, the rest of his friends aren't big. He's just huge. What does that question? Let me read it. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Why'd you skip it over that? Wow. No, I just wasn't interesting to me. Oh, really? Yeah. Go ahead. Can you only watch? Can you only watch softcore porn or minor league sports for the rest of your life? Softcore porns where they dry up a man's belly button. Yeah, I, I'd probably rather watch minor league sports. Okay. Who wins in a fight? The street fight: Michael Vick or Tim Tebow? Vick. Oh yeah, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be the first person he killed, would it? Yeah. Well, I think he'd probably sick a dog on him. Yeah. Hmm. I was thinking of uh, people be praying about it though. I was thinking of somebody else, that uh, lineman for uh, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis, yeah. What's not going? You can have sex with anyone, but that you ever wanted to, but from then on, you can only watch women's sports. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. <laughs> you can have sex. I, I with can't a lot hardly of watch women's sports unless it was beach volleyball. I can't hardly watch women's sports as is. You can have uh-huh. sex with a lot of people that you didn't really want to have sex with yeah, before. Yeah. <laughs> pick one. <laughs> pick one. Pick yeah. one person to do play by play of you having sex. Who would it be? Oh, Marv Albert. I believe. I believe do a good job. <laughs> you know who do a great job? Jim Ross. Good God Almighty, she's broken in half. <laughs> You're in a car chase with the police. What song is playing in your car? God, that's rough. Uh, I know what mine is. I've had I've had three wrecks to the exact same ZZ Top songs at Sharp Dressed Man, so I'm sure it would be Sharp Dressed Man by ZZ Top. I don't often. listen to it in the car if it comes on. You know what impresses me? I don't know, a little Dukes of Hazard theme song, maybe. Where do, you, where do y'all stand on this? I am so impressed by people that get pulled over and have enough ch- time to post blue lights in their rear view on Instagram or Facebook. And not be digging for their insurance Dude, I have no idea where that shit's at. And scared to death to make sure that they ain't done nothing wrong even when they haven't? Yeah, I have no idea where my registration's at on any given time. <laughs> but these people have enough time to do pop, that. Pop a selfie. Stupid. I ain't been pulled over enough to get those. I've never had a ticket. I have one. I got pulled over the other other morning because I blew through a stop sign. I'm not going to tell this story. Would you <laughs> Would you rather have ghosts be real or aliens be real? Aliens. Yeah, for sure, aliens. The aliens are going to try to abduct you, man. Yeah, but ghosts have been here. Yeah. Huh? Ghosts have been here. You want aliens? Yes. We have aliens. We just don't know it. Oh, one of these guys. No. You belong on Joe. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't think they're here. But I do believe somewhere out there they probably exist. What? <laughs> Would you rather be Magic Johnson or you without AIDS? <laughs> <laughs> Magic's lived a long, healthy life. Yeah, he's worth a lot. And of he's without him now, so I'm gonna say Magic Johnson. Yeah, he's without. You yeah, can't get I mean, ri- he's... you can't get rid of the hips, can you? Yes, yeah, he yeah, did. yeah you can. When now. you have that much money, you can. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's without. He's been clean for years. Your sandwich between your mom and your dad. Which way do you move? I don't. That question does not apply. Yeah. Well, you know, hypothetically. (laughs) So, would you rather watch your mom have a sex have sex with a hundred year old woman, or join once to make it stop? None of the above. What the (laughs) hell is wrong with you? (laughs) It's not me. It's the internet. internet. Oh yeah, yeah. (laughs) These are the internet's questions. Yeah. Yeah. But really, I'm looking for an answer. I'm not answering it. We, we answered <laughs> everything about that's awful. Well, I was about to say, we, we all, we both said, we're not bothered by the woman. Like, yeah, I, I don't care what my mom does. I'm not getting involved. <laughs> <laughs> Hands down, just no. Okay. Well, what was the other one about the mom and dad? It was, uh, uh, would you rather, uh, would you rather watch your dad have sex with a hundred year old man or watch your mom kill someone? That's what I'd it was. Must yeah, that's what watch it was. my mom kill someone. <laughs> yeah, that's what we said. Too. I'm surprised that hasn't happened. <laughs> yeah. What well, the the, <laughs> the other one? I, I, I combined them, didn't I? Yeah. It was it was make your uh, watch your parents have sex every night or join join once, once to make them, <laughs> make them stop. Yeah. Me and Lucas was lifting legs, showing them what to do. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Would you, you not get in there, James? No, would, no I'm, I'm out. <laughs> you on get there. in there. Uh, swivel them hips. Well, what about uh, putting your kid in the microwave for three seconds for a million dollars? 
Would you put Mav no, in the microwave for three that. seconds? I would not do that. For I've meal? been thinking about that question. If There's it's probably just no him ill for, effects for it, but I it, still wouldn't do it. If we're just putting him in there for three seconds and not turning it on. Oh, yeah, I'd do that. Yeah. We damn well know the question. That ain't yet. no different than sticking <laughs> him in a deep freeze out, closing the lid. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, that's a whole different story. How about yeah. putting it in a shark's mouth for three seconds? No. Is the shark alive or dead? <laughs> Obviously alive. Uh, no, not so much. <laughs> I love the kid. Listen, I, I know I talk bad about the whole parenting thing. Love the kid to death. Wouldn't trade him for anything no. in the entire world. Cliches. We'll never do anything to hurt the kid. Like Except for shake him. Just I, I, I've ne- I never <laughs> even shook him. But I'm saying I got to the point where I understood the comment a lot more. Yeah. Uh, no, I've never shook the kid. I've... I feel guilty for even whipping him for stuff he don't need to be doing, like running toward the road. But I still do it because that's what you have to do as a parent. What's the dumbest thing you've ever admitted to doing? The dumbest thing I've ever admitted to doing? That, that you can admit now. Oh, God. That you're embarrassed to know pe- other people. Like you would never want anybody to know it unless you're on a podcast telling it. Yeah, I'm not going to tell it. Yeah, what is it? I don't know, but I'm definitely not telling it. <laughs> mm. I've done lots of dumb things in my life. Yeah, we haven't really. What is that? Dog looking spot. Oh, okay. All right. That's James's cup. He's hustling you. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. It's a ghost. It's one of those alien ghosts that James was talking about. It's already here. It's this chair over here. I'm wiggling with my feet. Oh. There was another good one from that first week. Oh, what, what's what's one part of, of your body you would change? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, get rid of this fat stomach. Maybe it's ugly face. I don't know. I got lots. <laughs> I'd go. <laughs> I'd like to be 6'8". I'd go for that ugly face. Why would you be 6'8"? What good would it do you in this in this current era? Well, right at this moment, it wouldn't do a lot of good. Yeah, if I, I could have been 6'8 from years ago, I feel like I'd had a good chance to play ball at a higher level. Yeah, maybe, but maybe. I mean, it's not a for sure thing. But would you? That, it just seems like there's so many. Like, Listen, I get a change for free, fucker. I didn't pay a million dollars <laughs> for it. I want to be six eight. <laughs> oh man, it just seems like too big. I want to be six four. Yeah, oh. six four. You get you get to that man. I I want to be that small percentage of the population. I yeah. feel like there's I'm, still lots of six four guys. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're out there. I feel like if I was six four, I could have Jesse James Decker though. <laughs> yeah, you may not have that uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. BDD energy. <laughs> Maybe not. Did you say that VD energy? BDD. No, not venereal disease. No. <laughs> um, let's see. Hmm. Go back to being eighteen or winning one million dollars. I take the million dollars. No, knowing going back to that, going back to eighteen, knowing what you know now. Or have a million dollars. I I answered million because you can still do plenty at thirty five. Well, I would go back. That, to that. That's a tough one. Uh, knowing I, what you know, I now would probably go thing. back to eighteen, knowing what I know now. Because if I'd done things a little smarter, I'd probably be in a different situation. Would, Although I don't know that I want to change the situation, so yeah. million dollars would be awful nice. Would you have locked yourself in the bedroom while the rest of us were having the absolute time <sighs> of our lives? Yeah. Would no, you, no. Would, would you came and dance with us with naked girls on the coffee table? Yeah. I don't remember any naked girls on the coffee table. Just a lot of sausage. A lot of dick swinging around at apartment yeah. 11. Back I lived that life. I just done it a few years later. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you did it. You did it with those guys. Speaking of those guys, F. Mary Kill, Sashin, Chowdhury, Jimmy Campbell, or Andrew Lewis? Um, well, I'm going to marry George. He's by far the most responsible. Um, <laughs> you know? Okay. Oh, God. That's rough. F1 kill one. I'll probably sleep with Jimmy. He's probably got the most energy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill Sasha because he's what's left. That's just because I have to choose. It's because he's an Indian, isn't it? Yeah. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you racist. <laughs> well, that's the... Imagine you could... I wish you could imagine being down here when I give Lucas the question of Brad, Clint, and Don. I'd say he really thought that through. Why were you? Why did you have your whole mouth on the microphone? What else do you do with them? Well, when we get, <laughs> you look like Derek on a corn dog. <laughs> You're on the first date. Uh, uh. 
A joke? I mean, obviously, it's a freaking joke. Yeah, until it happens. <laughs> Derek, I ain't say that. I didn't say that. You, you I actually, did, you did. But you I did was, say that. Yeah, yeah, but that. I was kidding. Uh, hey, Derek's had girlfriends. We, we, that, we give Derek a hard time over the years. Hey, uh, but my God. Uh, Sometimes uh, quantity over quality. Yeah, I agree with you. My God. I agree with you. Not trying to give a man's you business. You said that wrong, DK, if you missed that. Quality over quantity. You, you said, said it backwards, though. I said quality over quantity. No, you, uh-uh. didn't. you said quantity over quality the first time. No. Which is must have been know, talking about that's how the brain works. Talk about me and James's life, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's some quality in some of that quantity. Yep. Sure enough. That's how it works. For thirty nine ninety nine for an internet account. You two can have good looking <laughs> girls come to your <laughs> What? <laughs> the what was that old site we used to aggravate you about? Tinder. I don't know. Grinder. Not grinder. I think grinder's a gay one. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not that one. Oh, shoot, I've been on lots of dating since over the years. I was on Tinder, Plenty meet. of Fish, not that one. Farmers well, only. Now what was the no, if you have to go fifty oh, fifty harmony? Sixty forty black people meet. You was on there on that one? No. Oh, Seventy thirty. What was the percentage you was on there for booty calls opposed to trying to find real true love? How many people on there really just trying to hook up? Just try to How many people soulmate? do I think was on there for it? Uh, I'd say it's more 70-30. Booty calls opposed yeah. to trying to find somebody. Yeah, yeah, and there was some. I mean, I dated I I dated two and three months at a time a bunch of those girls off of that. You brought one down here, the girl that we kayaked with, Lauren. Oh, yeah. Lauren? No, I didn't find her from there. I met her in college. Oh, really? Uh, Plenty of fish. That was definitely just a that should have been situation. That, that really that's really code for plenty of f- yeah. Uh, e Harmony, I, I dated a girl E Harmony. I still keep up with to this day. I mean, real nice girl. We just didn't work out. But uh, <laughs> who's that? Aaron. Uh, you never met her. Never mind. I don't guess uh, so. But no, super nice girl. Uh, and there's there's some, there's some people on there that are looking for more. Just maybe find it, maybe don't. Uh-uh. But most of them, if they're on there, they're, well, I mean, they're single and lonely for the most part, so. Just trying to, trying to, trying to. Yeah, trying to get through life. Sometimes. What was your little, percentage? What do you mean? Of, uh, looking to, looking for love. Was it 70, in all 30? the wrong places. Probably. <laughs> it, it, it was what it was. If I, if I found somebody worth keeping, I kept them. If I didn't, well. You didn't. Depending <laughs> on what they look like. Busting and, uh, and all these girls. Huh? It happens. <laughs> it's part of it. I mean. You're a, single, you're a single guy, you're out looking, you find something worth looking at. It's a fair game. Hell, you get so lonely and single enough, you buy a bar. <laughs> Did you ask me to manage? We well, both going to hell in a handbasket. Hey, I've wanted. i I've been wanting to ask you about that. Do you think the worst decision that you made about that bar was hiring Dustin, at, Dustin as a manager? Nah, I wouldn't have. It worked that. out okay. I brought good run. music in there at times. You were there for two weeks. I was there three months. I don't believe that. December to March. Either way, no, no, that had nothing to do with it. Hey, if I could have really been a hundred percent in on that, we'd have been good to get. We'd have done if good. I'd, uh, the I only thing on- I would have done different if I had that to necessarily do over again, I would have actually worked, learned about, and worked the kitchen myself a lot more. I, I would, I would have worked on the restaurant side of it a lot more, and probably end up buying another one. Mm-hmm. And open it up more of a high end kitchen or high end restaurant somewhere in Cookville. I do wish I had taken initiative on that a lot more. As far as the bar side was what it was, mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. I was only sixty percent probably. I couldn't be a hundred percent me on that deal because I had to work. I was I mean, working six to two thirty, and I was coming in working with one thirty two o'clock. It is what it is. I told you up front if you were going to do it, you didn't have to commit because mm-hmm. there would be no. I know. Half. I know. It was just. It was, it was too much. It was just hard. Which I me. ended up with managers that done their job. They handled everything the way they should. I mean, hey, I, I found you the replacement, the guy that's still managing. Yeah, it. I, I, I mean, I had no complaints. I, I was, I was very blessed to have people to run the thing. I didn't have to actually do anything but keep up with some numbers. I, I put no effort into it. Essentially, <laughs> I mean, it's true. James bought it the wrong time when when Tommy Goff owned it. We was all still wild and wanted to go out I there all the time. Owned it at just the right time. There was nothing wrong with that. Well, I mean, and, I mean, and he used to cuss us. He's like, all of, our, all of us used to go out there a lot, but then when he bought it, we didn't go out there as much. Oh, yeah. Uh, He's you son of a bitches. <laughs> when Tommy, I mean, we was all out here. It never bugged me until I'd see my friends at all these other places. <laughs> well, seriously. In fairness to me, I didn't go to other places. In fairness to you, 
if you seen them at other places, then you weren't at your bar either. No, I'd see them. I see I on am. social media they'd be at other places. Oh, okay. Although I, I'd, be, I'd go visit other places. I always forget about social media. James actually told me one time while I was managing the bar, let's go to what was it at the time next door, the library know, or happened. whatever it was, Rodeo oh, yeah. Bob's. Rodeo Bob's. He's like, let's go to Rodeo Bob's. Like I'm actually managing your bar right now. <laughs> That's all right. It's my bar. Come on, you can go yeah. have we, Cri- have Christy manage it. We've done a lot. Mm. It's too much. It was it was not good. We run out of keg and while we was gone, everybody was pissed when we got back. It was fun. I I loved it. <laughs> hmm. Probably the most enjoyable couple of years of my life. As far as just Except straight out straight no, as far as straight out stress free, just <laughs> enjoying life. It's like it was like a two or three year vacation. Mm. It was. In the middle of your life. I mean Mid mid life vacation. It was a mid life crisis, but yes, yeah. vacation is is accurate. Yeah. How old were you whenever you bought that? Ten 27. years older than ten years older than his first wife, <laughs> roughly. Twenty seven. <laughs> you bought your bought that bar at twenty seven, and how long did you have it? Uh, two years. Two years. So you already you was already in and out of your first business before you was thirty. Second business. Second business. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, I forgot about the yep. construction. The day the day I opened Woolies, I didn't know a dime on it. Really? Yeah. That's good. So you got out of that one scot free then. Well, he'd been yeah. pimping Jimmy Campbell out for five years. Yeah, no, nobody pay much though. He ain't worth yeah. a lot. I say, I say he just kind of passed it around. No. <laughs> like I said, I li- I lifted up. That's one of the reasons the million dollar question is a little weird because I feel like I could easily have had a million had I handled the money better to start with. Right. But at the same time, I wouldn't have all the experiences, and I wouldn't trade the experiences for the money. Right. I wouldn't. Clint Fraley's one time said it don't matter what materialistic things you have or what you can have it's all about life experiences he's pretty right about that i I still agree to that to this day like now i don't make shit i don't make any actual money not enough to live on but i i still find a way to enjoy life and that's i'd much rather enjoy life than have a lot of money well when you're laying on your deathbed realistically you ain't gonna (laughs) give a shit about that extra money okay if you got your family set up with a life insurance plan and you've saved your money decently, your family's going to be all right. But you're not, you're not going to have to live with all these regrets that I didn't go do this and I didn't do, go do that. That's, I think it's what Clint's meaning by that. Is, yeah, you're not going to care about that either, realistically. You only get one life. If you don't enjoy it. You're going to care that you lived life. I think so. I don't know. I think you're going to care that you didn't live your life to the best that you could i don't mean do everything stupid possible yeah it's not gonna matter in just a short period of time after that what what you did or what you didn't well yeah no but but would you rather live a life that where you stayed at home all the time and said i wish i could do that no you you don't get off on doing that like you don't you don't care about going to stuff but i do and a lot of other james i I think i think in your later years like in your if, let's say you live into your 60s, still fairly healthy. At that point, I feel like you're going to, you know, people are going to think, I wish I'd done a few more things when I was a little younger and felt a little better about them. I think my dad's going through that. He goes everywhere all the time. We never went anywhere when I was a kid. But it's good that he can still do that. Imagine if he didn't mm-hmm. have the health to be able to do that. Would he? Not, do you not think he would regret not doing it back then when he could have? Yeah, I, th- I don't know. I, I, and he's fortunate to, to have I, the health to do so. <laughs> we're trying to figure out get after 35 years. But I don't know what's in there. <laughs> but, uh, but realistically, yeah. I mean, he's going vacations now and he's going here, going there, going to concerts and stuff. I don't know. I, but again, I think, he I has think... the health to do so. Imagine if he didn't. Like, would he be sitting there regretting it? Well, let's hear it. You're wired differently. You're, yeah, you're, I... I I don't know. I just don't. I don't regret having done anything the way I've done it. So I don't. But it's you said, what had to been done at the time. But you said you could, if you'd go back, you wouldn't like have drank or anything. Yeah. If you don't regret it. No, I don't regret it. But you regret not having that time back. No. I'm trying to stiff you right now, the one. <laughs> no, I don't regret it. Well, people are different. Yeah. I mean, people are different. Yeah. I think if you know. I don't know, man. It's. I don't know why you would regret something that's in your past. It's it's just part of it. So like I don't know. It's like wake if up if you're laying there on your deathbed. I don't think you'd be thinking, man. I wish I'd have done this differently. I just think you'd be going, well, that's how it happened. What if your yeah. deathbed's lasting six months though? You got time to think about shit. Yeah, but you'd just be laying there thinking, man, that's just how it happened. That's just what it was. I'm not mean like I don't know. Like a lot of people just don't enjoy life. I mean, you experience life the way they should. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm thinking. 
Go do it. Go go do, do but stuff. but experiencing life is different for different people too. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta keep that Obviously. in mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like for some people, experiencing life is watching series after series of movies sitting on their couch. And and for somebody like me, it's spending time in the in the kayak going down a river. It it is two different lives because it's what we enjoy. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there's some things that you enjoy doing that you don't end up doing yeah. that you will regret that mm, if it's something you enjoy doing. I don't know. I think it just depends on whether or not you had a good reason why you didn't do it. If you had a good reason that you didn't do it and you decided not to do it, then why would you regret and, it? And, and I agree with that. Sometimes people do stuff without a good reason, though. But like they, ha- or they don't do stuff without a good reason. How many guys you ever met, though, that's married to that uptight lady that don't let them out the house and do nothing, and they're sitting there, and then 30 years later, they're, they're, they're divorced. They get yes. divorced. She leaves him for a man, you know. When the reason else. that you didn't do it is not you, it's it's someone else. Maybe that's where I'm at because it's always me. It's yeah. always my decision. Decision, yeah. Yeah, if it's if it's yeah. you and your own decision, I feel like you probably won't regret it. But if you're if that decision is based solely on someone else, yeah, I feel like you might regret it. I could see that. I'm fortunate. I mean, Lindsay lets me like I, I've. I've been to everything that I love. That shows he's you know, married. He used the words "she let lets me." Well, mm-hmm. right, but I mean, but realistically, you have to have the your permission slip signed, as I, mm-hmm. as you say. You know, you can't just up and go to wherever. And like I've been oh, to, yeah. I've been to a WrestleMania because I'm a wrestling nerd. I've been to Bonnaroo because I'm a music festival nerd. Uh, you know, I, I've I'm a season ticket holder for the Titans. I go to NBA games twice a year. Realistically, there are women out there that would either a bitch about that enough that that, that they won't let you do it. Let you, they won't let you do it, or, or they'll bitch about it so much that they'll make it miserable where you don't want to go. Then 30 years from now, that relationship doesn't work out, and you're thinking, I didn't get to see Jordan in his prime because that bitch didn't let me go. <laughs> or that female. I'm sorry. I, and and uh, I agree. I think that would be a scenario where you would definitely regret it if you made those decisions based on some just else's to decision. keep someone else happy that's no longer in your life. Yeah. Now, if she's still there and stand there at your deathbed, you probably can't really feel bad about it because, <laughs> or you well, can say, "By God, you remember that yeah, time?" Yeah, you, you might fuss at her at that point, but <laughs> I think there's scenarios where you can regret doing doing or not doing stuff. I can see on it if, if she's still in your life at that point. Well, I can probably ready to die. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can see that if it wasn't your decision to miss all those things, then then you would regret some of that. So, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, we're just trying to get you to see our way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know my way. I mean, I like I like a concert occasionally, but I don't go to a ton of them, and I don't I don't regret missing out on a lot of those. I can listen to the radio and hear the same music. It's yeah, not the same not experience. The same. It's, it's not, not the, same. the same experience at all. But I don't necessarily miss all that. There's a few things I still want to do as far as stuff like that Look, in my life, but Eric Church's whole concert at Nissan Stadium is on YouTube. Somebody recorded the whole thing in two different segments, which is sucks for that person. Like, why do you want to sit there and yeah, do that the entire time and not enjoy it? But uh th- they don't have the feels watching on even on watching on YouTube this morning. I watched clips of it this morning before I came over here. It's not you couldn't mean it as much as it were as it was live for shows like that. And you can you know, shows that we went to like in Alabama, you can say that on YouTube and be just fine with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But big shows, you want to be part of that stuff. If you love that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. If you love it. Yeah. I can watch every Green Bay game in the world on TV, but I plan on going. Right. I plan on going to Lambo, watching a game, and, and it will not be the same as watching it on TV or any to. other game I've you ever seen. If you're a Yankees fan, you got to get to Yankee Stadium. Yeah. Like you can't miss out on things like that in life that you are do have some passion about. I don't right? Think. No, without regrets. That's why I'm eventually buy that Hank Williams Jr. meet and greet. That's the one person I want to meet, and I don't give a. I, it's high. That's the only reason I'm not done it. How much is a meet and greet? It's, it's like four hundred bucks. Holy crap! Right. I can't and how do long it. does four hundred dollars give get you? Right. How, not no, enough. Realistically, how long? You're like a herd of cattle. Really, just I mean, passing through. It's too much. I actually. So my two favorite musicians live are Hank Jr. and Kid Rock. Pretty well said that a hundred times. Uh-huh. Eric Church is right there with them at three, in the top three. Yeah, they're together on tour this summer. Mm-hmm. They're in Indianapolis. They're in St. Louis. Or they're in uh, Cincinnati. Tickets went on sale this Friday for Atlanta, and I was online quick enough to choose choose the Hank Jr. option. Mm-hmm. And after Live Nation's fees and everything else for one seat. It was going to be four hundred and seventy-five dollars. Holy crap! That's that's right up by the stage, 
with a meet and greet pass mm-hmm. and all this other crap you get with the meet and greet. But I mean, a t shirt, you mm-hmm. know, come on. Right. What redneck looking Hank Jr. shirt am I going to have in my bag? Right. And then uh, that's, you know, I'm like, I. I can't. I can't justify four hundred and something. If you met, if you met him, would you show him where your tattoo of him used to <laughs> used be? To be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I always like that symbol, though. I just always like that Ruger symbol. A lot of people's got that symbol. Yeah, Not too many people. Like Curtis, I think Curtis Lee, Mackey, they've all got that Hank Junior. Mm-hmm. You tell him, say, look, this used to be your, this used to be your uh, tattoo right here. Yeah, under this sun, this big sun, don't mean shit. <laughs> under this God smack symbol now. <laughs> <laughs> I was really into you, then God smack came around and Sully, man, he's just so good. I had to, I had to cover you up, but oh, man, so good. at one point in time, you were the oh, shit. That's funny. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Um, I told um, Carlos that we would call him for a minute to, for like a, a quick thing. All right. As soon as Lucas gets his uh, thoughts back about him here, we uh, we was trying to we hadn't we hadn't had a guest on our show in here in a little, little while, so we. Um, no. <clears throat> I plug something in with everything hot and it uh, blew my eardrums. Blew eardrums out. I can't hear. I may be yelling right now. I don't know. <clears throat> that sucked. <laughs> well, on the other end of the phone, we have uh, Carlos Huesca, a friend of mine from Clarksville, Tennessee, and uh, godfather to Jeremy Mackey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's going on today? Uh, not much. Enjoying the day, getting ready for our upcoming in-store signings. So what he's what he's talking about? Carlos is part of, uh, well, I guess the creator of Man Cave Inc., right? Yes, sir. So he's uh, he's been on me forever about these signings and everything. So it's something he's been able to come to fruition with the last um, little bit. Um, Dustin's been all kind of shady about who's 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 the sign in here he ain't told me yet who the sign in is well that's what we're getting to we're building yeah. we're building we're building to a big so carlos has got uh jim ross not jim ross Oh, okay all right good god good god <laughs> stop the damn match <laughs> we we asked earlier we asked earlier if we could have one person to to commentate sex and i said absolutely it's gotta be jim jim ross because while you're taking her to pound town He's going to have the old, good God, she's broken in half. He didn't care. Did you hear that? He didn't care for that. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't care for it. <laughs> and I think Jim Ross would provide a great soundtrack for love making session. Nobody's ever said they were broken in half after they've had sexual relations with any of us in this building. Maybe Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas said maybe him. <laughs> Um, so anyway, so you got uh, you got Jayon Brown coming in linebacker. He had a breakout season for the Titans last year, and uh, he's going to be at your shop. So tell everybody, you know, about the sign and where the shop's at, and where they, you know, all the details. Yes, sir. Well, the the big thing was that we saw his coming out party in that game against the Colts at the end of the year with his pick six and you know fumble re- fumble creation and fumble recovery. So we know he's going to be a stud. Right, And so we're bringing him in Saturday, June 15th. He will be in store from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Our store is located on 12008 Lebanon Road, Mount Juliet, Tennessee. And all autographs are $20 each, no matter what you want. Just bring it in. We'll have pictures, uh, edits, helmets, football, jerseys available for purchase at the store. But like I say, come on down, meet him, take pictures with him. Um, he's a really, really good dude too. I actually ran into him on the, uh, the draft day. Uh, we were leaving the bar of them, the uh, F words and other podcast, or I forget what, I never can remember their name of their podcast, but it's a, anyway, a podcast had him and Will Compton stop by and, um, uh, we were leaving the bar going to the draft and he was leaving the same time we were. And we kind of was stopping at the red, same red light trying to cross and, uh, really good dude. Seems like really down to earth guy. He is, and also you'll like him because he's a really big wrestling fan. Who's not besides Lucas Hickman? I'm right? saying, I, besides me, yeah, yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> I didn't know that about him. That's that's pretty funny. So he, he'll probably enjoy. You know, I stopped at the Man Cave Ink Shop there, coming back from uh, the draft actually. And uh, if if you if you're into sports memorabilia, whether it's football or hockey, especially they they really specialize in hockey and pro wrestling stuff. Uh, really good collection down there. Of course, that's. 
that's one of my nerdy hobbies is is sports and music uh memorabilia and as carlos can attest i've he's traded me many good things over the years <laughs> yes sir so jay on um, jay on brown yep. from ucla uh, originally mm-hmm. from Long Beach, California, 24 years old, number 55 for the Tennessee Titans. If anybody like me doesn't know his history, that was a little bit of backstory on him. Bit of a beast, yes, too. Like, bit of a beast, mm-hmm. too. He played at UCLA. Where, has he made another stop? Oh, that's UCLA, too. Has he made another stop in the NFL, or is this his first stop? Um, this is his second year. Last year was his rookie year. Yeah, but I mean, it's the Titans is the Titans the only team he's ever played for in the NFL so far. Yes, sir. Ah, good deal. Uh, it, it, this is his second year coming up. Would have yeah. would have had to have been if he had a pick six last year. He he, he was just kind of overshadowed by uh, Rashad Evans going in the first round. Remember? I thought he I thought he came in with uh, Davis. I thought he was in Davis's draft. He could have been, like I said, he's he's a young guy. I th- maybe it's his third year. Either yeah, just, either either way, you're right. His coming out party was definitely that Colts game where he just he put the defense on his back that game and um really exciting. I think he was. Kept, mm-hmm. I think he was a fifth. I really round kept pick. talking about how uh, uh what's his name um Andrew Luck had never really been sacked and uh, Jayon changed that with the pick six and he caused a fumble, recovered it. Oh yeah, he was he was showing out that game. I th- I think he was a fifth round pick, so he was definitely you know along with Kevin Byard some of the best work J Rob's done for the Titans in the draft. Uh, yeah, definitely hitting Jim. Huh. What else? You know I like him because I'm originally from Los Angeles, and then my sister went to UCLA, so huh. that's what got me talking to him when I met him to get an autograph from my sister on some UCLA stuff. Yeah, Lake Carlos, the big Lakers fan. He's a big LeBron James fan. Huh. No, not a LeBron James fan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's interesting. His his background's interesting here. He went to a polytechnic high school, so maybe he's. You know, uh, what did he do at UCLA? Do it, uh, this is probably not interesting to anybody else. Was he uh like an engineering major or anything when he was at college? Going to a polytechnic. That I wouldn't school? know. Yeah. That I wouldn't know, but like I said, him being a linebacker and our coach being an ex linebacker. Mm-hmm. Uh, our coach probably had an eye, you know, and saw some saw some stuff that the normal person wouldn't saw in a linebacker. Right. Snatched him up, but that that um, high school was a real famous high school. I think if you research that, yeah, there's I'm... a lot of uh, guys who made it to the NFL from that high school. Really, bit of a breeding yeah. ground for NFL, huh? Yeah, like a little mini football uh, factory. Oh, huh, cool. Um, so what else you guys got coming up the shop? Any, any, anything else? Uh, in July, in July for the wrestling fans, we have AEW superstar Joey Janela, July twenty first. Yeah, I didn't know who he was. You guys posted that, and I had to ask my boy Chad, who owns uh, Heroes and Legends Wrestling um, mm-hmm. Memorabilia Company. He, I had to ask him about it, and he said he, said he took a big dive off of a, a famous bump a couple years ago off a barn. These dudes jumped off a barn or some nuts, <laughs> something nuts. I, I'm not familiar, but I, I don't follow the, that scene a lot as far as AEW and all the independent guys, but I do know he's a bigger name after I've researched him, so. So that's that's pretty mm-hmm. cool stuff coming up at the shop. I know you, like I said, it's been a hobby of yours for as long as I've known you, plus some. So uh, it's mm-hmm. cool, cool to find. I'll, I'll give you a little hint on stuff that you upcoming too. We're working right now. We're trying to get a Nashville Predator in there. Bam. Oh, um, we got about we got about three we're working on. But you know, when the season's over, a lot of these guys are international and they scatter to the winds and actually leave the country. Yeah, I had to back to Canada and everywhere else. Yeah. yeah. Uh, poly- some are playing. I guess there's a world's tournament going on too. So, mm. uh, Polytechnic High School, you were right. There's a lot of famous people come from there. Cameron Diaz is an alum. Juju Smith Schuster, Deshaun Jackson, Snoop Dogg is a Polytechnic. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, high school alum. Tony Gwynn, uh, the best hook man in the history of rap business. Nate Dogg. Yeah, Nate Dogg right there's a an alum. Carl Weathers. Bam. Yes, yes sir. Well, Billy uh, Jean King. Huh. A lot of famous people come from come from uh out that way. Yes, Jarrell sir. hey Jarrell Casey was from there also. Huh. Titans. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting background. I bet he'll be a neat guy to talk to. Yes, sir. I'm gonna try to get down there and do a little interview with him that day and see what we can hook up uh five to seven next week. So we'll see 
what he's got to say. He's a pretty funny dude. Like I so said, just and he, and he called it. And like he had some insor- inside source because my buddy Godwin's like, all right, man, who y'all drafting tonight? He's like, I think we're taking a defensive tackle. <laughs> and sure enough, they end up. Hopefully, with he didn't get in trouble for that. <laughs> <laughs> we can edit it out, maybe. No, no, <laughs> it, it'll be fine. He was just he was just taking a guess, really. I think is what they needed. You know, is what they. He said, I don't know, man. He said, I just have a feeling we're going to take a defensive tackle. And then Jeffrey Simmons pick 19. So that defense is going to be legit, man. When you you, you talk about Jayon Brown and Jarrell Casey and uh, Cameron Wake and the secondary being as deep as it is. Uh, yeah, Brees and Vaccaro. Well, Vaccaro and Byard being probably the, maybe the best safety in the league. And another year with Logan Ryan yeah. and Malcolm Butler getting to learn the system. So pretty exciting for the defense. Now the offense has got to step up and they've give. They give Marcus the most weapons he's ever had. We we're talking about, you know, the third year of Corey Davis. You're talking about, you know, Tajay Sharp and Taewon Taylor not being as bad as everybody's projecting them to be, but also they need to step up their consistency. And you've got the big uh, drafting of A.J. Brown. Of course, he pulled up lame with a hamstring the other day, but all signs pointing yeah, sure. to him, him being okay. Then, then, the, then the signing of Adam Humphreys, who looks like a Jehovah's Witness. Looks like a guy that you would <laughs> not answer the door for if he came to, the, to your door. But, uh. So exciting times! Delaney's coming back. Johnny will be back. So no excuses this year for the Titans. No, sir. We need to make it happen this year. All right. Any any parting words for Jeremy Mackey? He needs to come visit his brother. <laughs> and he, he, you know, he went to a wedding last night, so he may be laid up this morning. He probably is. Remember when I asked you if he was out somewhere because I was getting random texts? <laughs> <laughs> that made no sense. <laughs> that made no sense. I always like when he te- no. I always like like when he texts you and you ask you ask him what, then he gets offended like he don't and like dude you just said it. What are you talking about? What? <laughs> you text me, you know. <laughs> is your is your favorite night in Cookville karaoke or darts night? Hmm. I don't know when he sings dynamite, you know. It's a a treat. If you got to pick one, of course you're eating dinner at Crawdaddy's first, but then you're going to karaoke or darts night. Uh, I have to go with the karaoke. What's your go-to? Mm-hmm. What's your go-to song at karaoke night? Oh, like I said, when Jeremy sings Dynamite. <laughs> oh, di- di- oh, I got you now, Dynamite. Yeah, his act, his go. Usually, go ahead. usually when I go with Dustin Kennedy, it's usually some boy band songs. Yeah. In sync or uh, ninety five. He likes to do the. Uh, he likes to do uh, "What's Up, Doc" by the Flushnikins, and he always wants to do the shack part. <laughs> <laughs> I was the first pick, not Christian Layton or not Alonzo Mourning. See what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where that was from, but that's that's how he that's how he walks into the podcast studio every week. That's that's yeah. what he says. I was the first pick. <laughs> not, I never know what he's saying though. Not a Christian Layton. Not, not Alonzo Mourning. Do you want me to shoot it? No. Do you want me to pass it? No. Do you want me to slam? Yes. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> He's been asking me to call him Diesel here lately, and it never occurred to me that it was Shaq Diesel. Mm-hmm. It's. He says, just call me DK Diesel if you don't care. Yeah, for Dustin Fu. Yeah. We just talked about, prior to calling you, like regrets of us having in life and missing st- stuff. The fact that Shaq played two DJ sets and – Nashville in October, and I didn't go to either one, including the predominantly black club called Club Limelight. I was about to say, I feel like it probably wasn't your crowd that he was playing <laughs> to. I don't think, I don't think, uh, racial. I don't think that uh, you were the demographic he was shooting for. That's not racial. I think that's no. just. Did you see my picture with the cross? Yeah, from 1999. 2002. I and I, that was yeah. the demographic Shaq was shooting for. It was in 2002. This happens to be 17 years later. And I think you might have fallen out of the demographic. Tell me I'm wearing knees. He's got the awful shoes on, Carlos. <laughs> my God, they're awful. Brandon Gregory said they were cool. Yeah, yeah. He could pull them off. You're just mad because you can't. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad. I promise. I promise. Look, the, look uh, up top today. I'm, I'm, I'm half Luke Combs, half lesbian at bottom. Yeah, he is. He's in. <laughs> uh, he's going fishing up top and uh, lesbian on bottom. Effing on bottom is what he's doing. <laughs> Only thing I got these. I got. I got look, I got the. And I, I, got I did the mean fl- bottom effing is what I meant. <laughs> like the Dwight Howard bottom effing. Yeah. I'm yeah. look. I got the flat 
the flat non uh, mm-hmm. non uh, cargo shorts. Yeah. These these flat shoes like you, it's, it's lesbianish. You me. look like you're uh you should you're a nurse. Like your, I got your shoes look like nursing <laughs> shoes. You're all you're missing is the scrubs. He said last week that he really thought that was a cute look, Tom. and I thought he meant on girls. Turns out he wants to wear that look because he seems to be wearing it right now. With these shorts and these legs, if I put white K Swiss and white Oakleys on, I'd be a lesbian. Is there any way you could go get me another pillow and maybe a blanket? It's kind of cold in this room. A fox racing hat backwards is yeah. what I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fox racing hat with these shorts. Yeah. White Oakleys. Yeah, that's it. I sit next to him right at my Titans games. Mm. That's what I see every week. All week. Wallet. Chain wallet. Bam. White case Swiss. Yeah. Titan shirt with a sports bra pushing the tits down and a fox racing hat, white Oakleys. Bam. Well, hey, men, men got to stop. That's that's a that's a thing for women that like others. Men got to stop wearing white sunglasses. James, you own some white sunglasses for you. You don't, you're, but not now. <laughs> <laughs> James is falling asleep on us. All right, Carlos. Well, it's good talking to you. And like I said, one more time, give them, give them everybody the, the time and location one more time. It is. Pop that up again because I don't want to. Oh, my bad. <laughs> and so this is, it actually is a brick and mortar location. Brick and yes, mortar. Yes, it store. is. It's an actual store. Bam. That's the Man Cave Inc. store in Man Cave Mount Juliet. Mount Juliet. And like I said, it's going to be Saturday, June 15th. He will be in store from five to seven, and our address is one two zero zero eight Lebanon Road in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. And all autographs are twenty dollars each. And comes with a free picture with. So yes, sir. So all right, like, so we have plenty of items available for purchase. Oh yeah, Titans fans. So then, so hit it up, man. We he's got jerseys. He's got he's got uh, mini helmets. He's got pictures, edit, custom edits, and everything. So that's if you're interested, it's Jayon Brown next Saturday, Man Cave Inc., Mount Juliet, Tennessee. So yes, sir. And if also you can also check out our Facebook page if you got any more questions or couldn't write it down the time I give out the info. Oh yeah, plenty of stuff, and we'll I'll share the link on our social media. And like I said, they 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 got plenty. I, I stopped by the shop one day, and they've got plenty of football, hockey, wrestling, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, all right, Carlos. We'll uh, good talking to you, my man, and we'll uh, see you next Saturday. All right, y'all have a good Sunday. See all right, man. See. You. Bye. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't have much else for today. Do you go get your autograph signed? What'd you say? July 15th, five to seven. Jay on Brown. Oh, we're on live right now. Yeah. We're on, yeah. This is still a podcast. <laughs> this is still a podcast. We got anything closing for James. I feel like we hadn't really embarrassed him enough. He was way too easy on that F Mary kill. Well, he, he just fell asleep on us. So, I mean, <laughs> he's, I don't know. Man cave Inc. Mount Juliet, Tennessee. In- Inca spelled with a K. Yeah. For anyone who's Googling it. I would say. The, Lucas. Yeah, I would say. Uh, <laughs> I, I put INC, and I thought he's also selling beard oil, but he is not. <laughs> now, here's, a, here's a question for James. If he can make a free throw, because he's a basketball guy, he's a very good basketball player back in the day before he ke- towards Achilles like Kobe Bryant. He got fat. Make a free throw, you get a million dollars, miss it. And you'd lose your texting privileges forever. I'll take the free throw. <laughs> hey, he he won the Red Bull and Sprint, or no, Clay County alumni game three point shootout a few oh, years ago. I won, the, I won one at Red Bull and a couple years you ago. You won one at Solana too, did you? I don't, I don't remember. I might have. I don't know. Probably. Remember. You're so good. You could be a character from any TV show. I can still shoot. I just can't move. Oh, I hear that. <laughs> character from any TV show, who would you be? Lucas, you answer this today. If I was a character from any TV show, I would probably probably be Homer Simpson. But you don't drink beer. Yeah. Uh, if you're Homer Simpson, I, I'd, you eat, would. I'd eat all the donuts, and I'd, I'd probably drink the beer. I, I feel like it's my spirit animal. Maybe you know, hair slowly going away. Uh huh. You know, not a good driver. Uh, eats a lot of donuts. Falls asleep at work sometimes. That's. What about you? Got a little boy that won't listen sometimes. That's... I feel like Tim Allen from Home Improvement had it going on. Oh, right, he had the right, life. Right, 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 I mean, right. He he got to be a man. He had three sons. Pretty good looking wife. I mean, yeah, it's pretty yeah. well my life. You, uh, he he, you he just, had it going uh, on right there. You just said you're done it too, so. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, but his are older. Yeah. He, he, he's yeah you got to go through the little part. One, yeah, at one point they were not 
No, they weren't. This is a damn TV show. They started. <laughs> they started at like seven. You know, Patricia Heaton, I believe, was the name of his wife in uh, in uh, that show. He also has a new show, and I can't think of what it's called. And the other day, um, he had her on. Yeah. Uh, as a yeah, as a I've guest. Seen it. Yeah. Uh, huh. What is the new show? I don't know. Uh, I've seen Big Classified or something. No, I, I I like the new show too, but he's got daughters on it. Mm-hmm. I'd imagine raising a daughter would be a lot worse. Oh, I can't it'd be different. That. But yeah, but would you ever want to live live all that many years next to a neighbor and never see his face? Yeah. Yes, that's the exact perfect yeah. neighbor. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> if uh, if he's a weird cat like that that always just wanted to give advice, you could. I'd, I'd be alright. I, I, I think it'd be neat to have neighbors around around your age with kids around the same age as your kids. So. Yeah. So you could wife swap. Uh, I mean, that might be okay if you're <laughs> that sort of thing. But I was thinking more just so the kids could play in the backyard. I was like, so you, oh, you have somebody so to, some you got somebody you to grill with. Pawn those kids off. I was at some point you could say, "Go play with the neighbors." Yeah, go play with the neighbors. Exactly. Or, go play with know, the neighbors. You, you're working on a project. They come by, say what you're doing, sit and have a beer, and not have to drive somewhere to go have a what, beer with somebody. Go see what Daryl's doing. Go see what Daryl's doing. Go see what Daryl's doing. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say it again. Uh, Gary Dunham, <laughs> when he lived in Coolville in the subdivision, he goes, if I come out of my house one more time, the kids are in my trampoline. <laughs> he, said, <laughs> he said, my kids ain't even out here. My kids are in there on Facebook. He said, the other neighbor's kids are in on my trampoline. Said, I'd just be happy somebody used my trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> We asked this question last week. If you could eat whatever you eat whatever you want without getting fat or never pay for a meal again, what would you do? Eat whatever I want without getting fat. That Preach. would be the best thing ever. Preach. Preach. Oh my God. I love food. I hate but having I do to not sit. love getting fat. I hate having to think about everything I eat. Yes. Yes. I hate yes. It. I hate it so much. Which I do that I do it like a couple weeks on, a couple weeks off. So yeah. that it kind of balances because I don't want to always think about what I'm eating. Yeah. That's all I'm doing right now is just thinking about what I'm eating. Yeah, thinking about what you're going to eat next, how many calories in it. Yeah. If you should eat or if you shouldn't. I always shouldn't. It's annoying. Start being fat. <laughs> yeah, that's, you're that's doing true. something about it, though. I am. I am 25 pounds now. God dang, 25? Yeah, that's what happens. Uh, at this point, I'm, I'm. you remember that time when I said I, I, I spotted you two weeks because I was about to bust it? Yeah. You gotta have to spot What's me wrong with now? me? If I, I think I have thyroid issues, guys. I don't no, think you do. I, think I don't think bullshit. you do. I think you have. I don't impulse think a lot issues. of people have thyroid issues. I think. It's, I think you. I think it's all impulse. We mean impulse. I think you have bad impulses. You got, you impulsively drink beer. <laughs> no, I don't impulsively drink beer. I impulsively eat like crap. Yeah, I know. That. I haven't had a beer since. I mean, I don't remember the last beer I drank. Hmm. Okay, well then you impulsively eat other things. I then. do bad. Yeah, eating's my problem. Yeah, always you know, is. But at this point, I want it to happen overnight. Yeah, I, yeah, it won't. Yeah, it no, won't, no. It, no I need an illegal substance in my life. <laughs> that or I need something because I don't have the patience. I'm going. What's today's date? Uh, the eighth. I'm going to the beach in 20 days. You gotta be disciplined. Yeah. Hey, I tell you what. In three you weeks, could, I guarantee you can go 15 easy. I would say in 20 days. In 20 days, you could be a, look completely different. Tell sure. me how, Sensei. Stop eating all the time. Count calories. Count, count calories. calories. Count calories. I'm down 20 stupid. pounds since Stop. about uh, you do, I noticed ago. that earlier at your house when I was picking you up. But and it's you because your... I disciplined in counting calories. Dude, I went so much. Like last week. Last week. It don't work in a week. I know, but God it does. It does start working it's, in a yeah. week. Yeah. I went to the gym. Just in a week, it doesn't. I went to the gym like four times last week. Went hit the elliptical for forty minutes plus each time. I was eating tuna for breakfast, Uh chicken breast with green peas or lunch, Mm -hmm. and supper was usually tuna or you know something light. Here's here's what you don't know, or what most people one they start getting, yeah, you know, upset right there off the beginning because you go work out and you sweat it a lot. You sweat it puddle. You take your shirt off and you look fatter than you did when you started. Right? You're like. How in the hell does that happen? Why do I look fatter right now than I was yesterday? Well, what what you don't what you don't understand is is that when you start sweating a lot, you've got a lot of water stored up inside of your body that hadn't it's just been there for a long time. You're oversaturated with water, and you have all the subcutaneous fat like right under the skin, right? All that water starts moving out into your subcutaneous fat so that it can sweat out because you're hot, right? So you start sweating more and more and more, and all that water starting to move out towards your skin. You're going to start looking jiggly right there, and you have to get past that point. You have to get past it so that you can uh, start losing a little bit of weight and seeing it gone. But it takes a while. That first, that initial three or four days just sucks. I bet you've got eight pounds of water weight on you, oh, you got more right away. I've never that, heard the word. In two weeks, in two weeks, you'll lose that. Oh, yeah. Just by not eating 
extra crap. Why mm-hmm. do you get all that water when you're trying because to Because your body down. needs it. If you if yeah. you was to go try to run two miles right now and you didn't have that on that you, ha- you would basically off. die. Yeah. First but off, that's a fictional away. story right there. <laughs> no, but I've I, never heard the word subcutaneous no, in my life other than that. That's a that's an impressive Below word. The surface. Yeah. You sons of bitches showing it. You're not supposed to do that. What? I didn't know what you knew what subcutaneous meant. Do you watch X Men or something? My wife's a nurse, and when she brings out nursing facts at me, I spat them back at her, and then she sits there in awe. Am I the dumbest <laughs> person y'all ever met? Yes. No. 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 no God. No. 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 Pretty smart, really. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but really, uh, you you lose it if you if you seriously discount. Keep your calories down to about seventeen, eighteen hundred a day for two weeks. Or, you will lose ten pounds. Man, or, most of that'll be water weight. Or. Go lower than that throughout the week. No, hold listen to me. Go lower than that throughout the week. And then if you feel like you're you have to have your net calories throughout the week, right? You, your net calories throughout the week have to be less than what you take in. Or I'm sorry, less than what you've expended to lose any weight. So if you're gonna need to do a cheat day, if you feel like you have to do a cheat day, save some of those calories for one day, and then your net calories are still the same. He should still be good at that at yeah. seventy eight hundred. I yeah, di- but, I died at about nineteen hundred. Yeah, you can and lose about on, two to three pounds a week. Yeah, well, I'm just here to tell you. I always thought a pretty face was gonna get me by. Yeah, but that fat it's, ass is getting in the way. <laughs> <laughs> but this pretty face is fading a little bit. It's getting a little rougher, a little more bags going on the face. Got a double chin going on. Hair sliding back. Person, hair's been going back. I got that Peyton man and forehead going on. Mm-hmm. I, I've never had the best personality God ever gave everybody anybody. Mm-hmm. So uh, no. you guys can verify that. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, so these jiggly tits is really getting to be an issue. They are. I've been meaning to talk to you about it too. It's just shit, man. I out push. I'm tired up of you. wiping that. Sweat off the table. The under sweat, the under titty mm-hmm. sweat. Under sweat on Look, the all realistically. Hey, it happens to everybody as they get older. If you don't watch your weight, it will get out of hand. I'm just tired of ugly people telling me I'm fat. That's it. I'm tired mm-hmm. of ugly people telling me I'm fat. You're you ugly. know what? You probably told them they were fat for years, and it's called fucking payback, Dustin. I'm tired oh, of seems it. strong. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> seems aggressive. I'm just saying. It's seems probably like payback. you might have called him fat. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. No, I, I, I feel like I get fat because I made fun of my sister for years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I when guess. I got fat, trust me, she let me know it too. I just, I, it's, I mean, yeah, man, because I'm like, I'm sitting there and I was really getting with it at, at the elliptical this you week. You just got to get past that first four or five days and that'll quit. Yeah. yeah. That, that whole not looking right in the mirror still will go away well, after just, all that water starts coming out. Even like, you know, I, I, you know, you know how the phrase is you can't tell it on the scale, but you can tell it in your waist. I couldn't even tell it on my waist, man. I'm still on that first belt. Because you've done it for one week. Yeah. I, I get it. You're right. But I mean, I've done low carb diets before when you just, after the first week, you can tell it. I was also probably my 29, you know, 28, 29. Joe Wall from Avery's got to quit breaking donuts in my office every two weeks. Yeah, or you just got to quit eating them. Yeah, right? that's that's the easy part. How rude is that, though, right? To uh, bring you to my office. There's two people that works there. Where, who else hey, is going to eat them? No, thank you. I know. The first week he came, I didn't eat them. You know why? Because it's like he went to Big O's and said, oh, uh, what, what don't people... Order. Uh, yeah. Give me a dozen. What, give me a dozen. What are, what are those donuts that'll make Dustin fat? I want to take no, those no, into no. his it's, office. It's, it's like, what, what don't people ever order here? Yeah, give me a dozen of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he brought some bullshit I ain't ever even seen in my life there. But last week, he brought that ha 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 in the ghetto. Those told, blueberry cake donuts. I love oh them blueberry. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's yeah. what in the ghetto, when I hang out with my homeboys, we can say that ha ha ha. Uh-huh. That's what he brought. Ha ha ha. It's got the apple in the middle and the cinnamon on top. Mm, that blueberry that James was talking about. Blueberry cake donuts. All that shit. good stuff. Ha, 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 ha. Well, put, put that on a t-shirt. Ha, ha, ha. Well, I'm tired of being fat. I'm going to go work out now. Let's go work out. I don't work out. Don't fill that cup back up with whatever you had in it. Let's just go. I got, just go lean, I got lean all up in my bladder. I you had a Star Wars cup, 44 <laughs> ounce. <laughs> the, full of it. The, la- the last two times I've went on weight losses, though, I- I've not worked out. Oh yeah, you I don't strictly have to. just control what I eat, and yeah. it, it's really that simple. Unless you're trying to burn excess calories, you don't yeah, have to. Which I mean, I get extras at work, so yeah. I do have an active job. But still, I, I'll lose two to three pounds a week strictly by just controlling my calories, and I'll still allow myself three or four cheat days a, meal, a month. Cut, I got I got to be chest neck in twenty days. Cut seven thousand calories a week out of your diet. Ah, that's a daily. That's a day right there for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, just don't eat one day. <laughs> cut seven thousand calories a week out, and you'll lose two pounds. 
Look, I gotta go because this is a kid that we're taking on a vacation with us. He always is calling me out on some stuff. Like one time, he comes to he come to practice in different tennis shoes all the time. He had fancy tennis shoes. He had the KDs. He had the LeBrons. He had the Currys. I'm like, dang, son. I said, you got two hundred dollars shoes every time you turn around. And one day we was at a ball game. He stepped on my feet. I said, hey, man, easy. It's got some new kicks. I can't afford two hundred dollars kicks every time you turn around. You stepping on my brand new uh, shoes here. I said, I broke down. Got two pairs. He went. <laughs> Two pairs. You must hit that rack room special. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Hell yeah, it's rack room." Yeah. You say you're taking him with you he's on Waylon's buddy. Yeah, he's, he be, he'll be judgmental. Yeah. We're going to Disney. Going to Disney with a seven month pregnant wife in July. Uh huh. Tell me how magical that sounds. Yeah. No. Mm-mm. When are you going? Jimmy's going at some point. I wonder if y'all going the same time. July first and second. Uh, That'd be amazing I, if Jimmy I, was there. I don't know. I'm not I'd sure. love to see Jimmy Campbell's face down there. I'm sure. No, you gotta, you no, know I'd why? say by the time you see him, neither one of y'all will be happy to see well, each other. Well, the reason I said I was ready to see him is because he's he's got a punchable face. Oh. <laughs> by the time I deal with my seven-month pregnant wife in July at Disney, I'm ready to punch somebody. God, I don't know why anybody go to Disney ever. No. Mm-mm. We're well, gonna go. We're gonna go. But <laughs> gonna, I don't know. My my uncle's mentioned. I said that is the dumbest thing ever. Yeah, we're gonna well, go. Walking got around, to, standing in lines. Yeah, we're gonna do it. Not we're getting stand to in them do anything lines. with whiny kids. That's the thing. No. The lines are, are horse shit, man. Yeah, the lines are horse shit, and um. We got some fast passes, so which basically means we'll get to ride like two rides. So you're rides. gonna be that douchebag that walks past everyone Everybody. while getting dirty but, ass looks, but only for like two rides, right? It's oh. not. Yeah, it's nothing. That's like, even worse. Yeah. Um, hold on. I, I need. So to, we're gonna wrap this up. Wrap yeah, it up. he gotta go work out. I gotta and, go. And we're gonna not. Couple things I want to say. You need to check Same. out. You need to check out Rich Froning. Mm-hmm. I thought it was Rich Froning. Froning. Well, I said Froning. Lucas corrected me. We got to Eric Church. Mackie and Thad told me that Lucas was wrong. It was Rich Froning. I'm pretty sure it's Froning. But then Rich Froning got on the TV, uh, the podcast with the boys, uh-huh. uh, busting with the boys, Taylor Long, Will Compton. And they said Froning. Oh. I would say, I'm not saying Froning because I'm making it up. I'm yeah. saying it because I've heard him introduce himself right. a bunch of times. Huh. And they introduced him a well, bunch. Now, I've, always, I've heard a lot of people that like personally know him. Yeah. Say it as Froning. Yeah, I don't know anybody that personally knows him. I've just heard him in interviews I'm, say my name I know is Froning. Several people personally know him, and yeah. they've always called it Froning. Huh. Yeah, me too. I've always said Froning, but he said, Yeah. Lucas is right on that, too. I've heard I mean, it. I would trust the words that come out of the man himself. Yeah, mouth, I mean, I'm but just, that is how that works. Taylor Lewan yeah. also called it Cooksville. Yeah. A uh, hundred <laughs> times. But you need to check out that Bustin' with the Boys. Mm-hmm. Really good interview oh, where go. he talks about everything, mm-hmm. all the CrossFit, and how he's kind of just listen to it. Uh-huh. Bustin' with the Boys. I want to give a shout out tonight to, uh, Kristen Heflin from Illinois. So I was on the Cody Jinx on a Cody Jinx page the other day on Facebook. Somebody had a Cody Canada Cody J- uh, Jinx comparison, mm-hmm. and I kind of commented on it. Somebody was kind of bad mouth Cody Canada, so we got to interview him twice on our podcast, One Lane Road podcast. Mm-hmm. What led to that was this Kristen girl said, "Hey, I love Cody Canada. Where can I find your podcast?" Ah. So piggyback off that, another guy said it too. I'm not sure if that guy found it because the post got deleted by the guy. Uh-huh. So the ultimate end game for this guy was um, to play his song. He wanted to get everybody's attention, get a big bunch of controversy stirred up. Then he's like, oh, by the way, here's my song. And I'm <laughs> a pretty smart guy. Uh-huh. But um, other dude, I don't know if he found it in time before the post got deleted, but Kristen did. And uh, you know, she said she loved Texas country. And I was like, yeah. well, we've got Chris. Well, of course, Chris Knott's Kentucky, but we've got Jason Eady and Cody Canada. Go back and listen. So um, she has been listening, and uh, yesterday I, I put we have we had three extra posters from the Andrew Pope concert. Yeah, because Chris brought us some extras to the, to the Jason Eighty one, uh-huh. um, and I got to send Andrew one. So we had three left, and I put it on our Facebook page, and I said, you know, who wants one? Mackie claimed one, Jason Lynn claimed one, and Kristen claimed one. Ah, right, cool. And I said, well, how's the show going for you? And she goes, I've been binge listening. She said, I listened to the shows forty through forty four and seventy six. She said, come Monday, I'm starting on one and yep. coming on up. Probably start at 76 and go forward. But I, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I told her things were better yeah. these days. Yeah. I said, I cringe when I think about those first 30, yeah. 40 episodes. 76 is probably a good place, a good starting <laughs> point. I'd probably just start there and yeah. binge forward. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's, I agree, too. But yeah. also, she's from Illinois, so it's uh, again, it's also cool just to yeah. kind of get out there and interact with people on social media can do things like that. So yeah. thank you for being on board with, with Kristen. Your poster's coming this week, and 
Maybe a beer koozie for getting left. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. everybody. Thanks for listening, James. Thanks for being here. Thanks no, for falling no asleep problem. in my chair. That was <laughs> well. Was real late. We're talking. And I don't have earphones. So oh, I didn't yeah. know what was going on. Yeah. Today. Whenever I, whenever I redo stuff again, I'm I'm gonna try to put some ports in the table so that people can plug their earphones. Hey. Y'all are so damn fancy around here with all your little electronics and shit. Yeah. Can't we just have a microphone, hold it by hand, and well, yeah, we used to do that. Yeah. You was here for that. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. You were on episode Makes seven, James. Yeah. That's the night we went to the lake and slime. Everybody was making fun of the podcast, and I tell them to suck it. I don't remember any So get on board or suck it. You know what I didn't get invited to? What? The one you actually done at the lake. That's the one I'm most pissed about. You do an episode at the lake. I didn't get an invite to even come hang out. Yeah. 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 Everybody else did. I know. I know. That's what pissed me off about it. But you know what? They were already at the lakes. Why? Don't make excuses. I don't believe it. We got ran Jace Farley has never went to the lake without an invite in his entire life. I wouldn't imagine. I don't think Jace Farley was there, was he? He was there. Yeah, it was their boat. He was on... No, it wasn't. 100% everybody that was on that boat that day were at the lake and saw on social media we were there. Mm-hmm. 100%. Anyway, I didn't get an invite. Yeah. Suck it. So, all right. Suck and, it, James. And that's what I told them Get the hell out of my house. All know? right, everybody. And I'm trying. We're trying to leave. Shut up. Trying to leave. Shut the hell up. Don't tell another story. 102 episodes later, if you still ain't down with one later, row podcast, suck it. All right. Love you, everybody. See you later.